Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Uh, welcome to a stream that's out of... Everything's weird this week. We streamed yesterday. We don't, don't, normally, don't normally stream on two day, Tuesdays. Uh, it's Wednesday, and it's later in the day, but we're here. Welcome, everyone. And we're going to be working on uh, Code Wars Code Katas today. Uh, so if you are unfamiliar with this, check this out. And hey, Jackhammer, thank you for that Twitch Prime Risa. Wait, did that, did that work? I don't know if I missed it. Oh, I, I, I did cats. It's katas. Katas. Like that. Um, if you go to codewars.com, this is the website where we'll, we'll be finding challenges. And Danny, thank you for the video bits who says, yay, I can be here now. Nice. Um, and if you go on github.com slash coding garden slash code dash katas, you can see all of the solutions for past episodes. Uh, technically, this is episode... Is it episode 60? I think we're at episode 60. And Hector, thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. Very much appreciated. There's like a weird thing happening here. Is it? It's this. It's my invisible bottle. Put that there. Um, but also on YouTube, you can see all of the past uh, playlists as well. Uh, here or uh, the past videos, the past live streams. Coding Canuck, thank you for the hundred bits. We've gotten a lot of supports today. We're in a hype train. Hype train. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's there's been a lot. What's happening? What's happening? Um, shout out to uh, Finn who subscribed with Twitch Prime when I wasn't streaming. Appreciate you. I think maybe it was Natsuko. Either way, I appreciate you all. I'm Tom Eddie. Thank you for that three-month Twitch Prime resub. Insta-Fluff with the five-month resub. And uh, Urban Edge, thank you for those 100 bits. Shout out to Insta-Fluff. I think we have an Insta-Fluff command. Or is it just fluff? It's both. <laughs> Try either one, but uh, click there, drop a follow. Uh, Insta-Fluff usually streams on Wednesdays. Is he streaming right now? You should probably go watch him if he is. Um, what's happening? Very cool. Thank you for the 100 bits. Uh, and Marco with the five, what, with the five gifted subs. Thank you so much. Jackhammer with the two month three sub. Funny Danny Larn, uh, with the 50 bits. John! Ah! <laughs> Come on, John. <laughs> John with the 10 gifted subs. <laughs> Thank you very much, John. Uh, and the she boss with the gifted sub as well. You're, you all are too kind. We're gonna, we're gonna have fun today. I can tell. Because you're giving me money, right? That's how we have fun. Uh, Hector, thanks for the Twitch Prime sub. Coden Canuck, 100 bits. Urban Edge, thank you for the 100 bits. Bear Cool with the 100 bits. John with those 10 gifted. Mike, I missed that. Mike, thank you for that 4 month 3 sub. And the She Boss with the gifted sub. Hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, oh, no, oh, no, no. Uh, that's unfortunate and still left. But I'm glad you could be here. Deadline <laughs> lurkies and deadline lurkies. Uh, McBelly Shelf. <laughs> Thank you for the resub. Who says my daughter says hi? Hi, hi, McBelly Shelf's daughter. And Marco with the five gifted subs. <sighs> you all are too kind. You all are too kind. Okay. Uh, it's not Jif. Vicus. I saw your message earlier. Who said I am not? I am. My name is Vicus. And that makes sense because your username is I am Vicus. I always call you I am though. Uh, Vicus. Hello, Vicus. Okay. Um, if you're new here, uh, we do this thing here called the drop game and it's very fitting that instafluff is here because he he created he's the inventor of the drop game uh, but you can do just like a way to just did so in the chat if you type drop me that will drop your avatar like so and uh there's me and if it lands in the garden you'll get your name on the screen for a second um but i guess we don't have a command for the original drop game there's instafluff uh, close one close one it's pretty close. Nobody's landed in the garden yet. Come on, people. Get some better drops in. Uh, it's completely random. <laughs> we have some plans in the future to have uh, a way of setting the velocity or the direction of the drops. This is actually quite amazing that nothing has landed in the garden yet. Uh, that's going to be a good one. Who's that? Who's that? Hey, Coden Canuck. Good job. Good drop. The closer you are to the center, the the bigger your uh, your seedling is. Um, Jakob with the 50 bits. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you for the 50 bits. Uh, but quick shout out to pixelplush.dev. Uh, oh, new games. September sale. I haven't been here in a while. <laughs> but uh, you, if you want to add the drop game to your stream, you can check out uh, this. Melky Dev. Thank you for those 50 bits. Um, Four and Pop with 100 bits. Join in the train. Oh, thank you all for the supports. Uh, cool. That's the drop game. Um, this is my chat overlay. As you can see, the chat messages appear here. I have tried Svelte. Uh, it seems like there might be some new people here today. So, first of all, uh, check out my YouTube. I put videos there. Just like people do on YouTube. <laughs> and then also... 
Uh, if you go to this video's website, coding.garden slash videos, um, this is just uh, all of my YouTube videos here that you can search across. Rhino with the 300 bits. Thank you very much for those bits. Uh, but if you click the Svelte button, you can see all the streams where I worked with Svelte. Um, or click any of those other buttons too. And then also, uh, if you are very new here, check out the Frequently Asked Questions. Um, hey, Jakob, with a Twitch Prime resub, why do script modules not work? Let's see what they said. <laughs> Uh, why do script modules not work locally and need a web server? Any idea? Do you mean in the browser? So like if you're trying to do JS modules without a build tool directly in the browser, is that what you mean? Please clarify. Marco, thank you for those 500 bits. Oh, thank you, Milky Dev. Uh, a, re a smiling review from Milky Dev. Mil Milky Dev likes my YouTube videos. Um, yeah, yeah, and so and, uh, check out the frequently asked questions. Now, here's the thing. If you're new here and you want some sort of icebreaker question uh, or something like that, you can just say hi. We're very friendly, so if you just say hi, we'll say hello back. Um, but if you have a question and you're new here, it's very likely that it's answered here. We talk about, like, what's my theme in VS Code? You're going to want to know because it's, it's a good one, at least... The fact that people ask all the time <laughs> makes me think that it's a good one. Uh, you can know, like, what is my keyboard? What is that break timer thing that keeps popping up? All, all the other stuff. Check out the Frequently Asked Questions. Um, and now, let's talk about my chat overlay. I got just, I got sidetracked. It's a good one, <laughs> rest assured. <laughs> we also have a, we also, Kappa, uh, we also have a command for it. So there's a direct link to it. Uh, but if you go to the Frequently Asked Questions, you can, um, you can get more info about it. You pulled an all-nighter watching my old streams. Oh, that's that's good to hear. Thank you for watching. Yeah. Okay. Uh, chat overlay. <laughs> like I mentioned, you can see that some users have their pronouns set. So uh, Dragon goes, uh, their pr preferred pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, their country is the United States and their team is Team Java. Um, let's see who else. You can see that uh, uh, Nick Tyndall is from the US and I don't know what that is. Is that the new Microsoft Edge icon? Is that what that is? I don't know what that is. Um, <laughs> Uh, Rhino has the Switzerland flag and uh, the Java team. Uh, William Cameron has the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland flag, and also uh, SUS or OpenSUSE. So if you too want to set these things, uh, you'll feel a need to touch adjust your earpiece when you... <laughs> I did it right before that. It's getting, it's getting kind of annoying. I, yes. Um, Yes, yeah, I do this a lot now. I need to forget. I need to get a better fitting ear ear ear, ear adjustment. But you're right. Okay. But yes, uh, if <laughs> if you want to set your team, you can uh, go here to the font awesome brand cheat sheet. This is where we're pulling the badges in from. So any name on this page you can choose. Um, is Heroku on here? It's not Heroku. No. Okay. Actually, I'm going to choose Ethereum. Um. I have about, well, actually, I don't know how much it is now because I don't know how much Ethereum I have, but I have like $700. Well, at last time I checked, I had like $700 in Ethereum. It started as like $300 <laughs> a long time ago. But if you do exclamation mark team uh, followed by any one of those names from that page, uh, it's going to set that team uh, in the overlay just like that. And thank you all for the support. It's great hype train, everyone. Good job. Um, see what happened. Uh... It didn't tell me, but thank you all for the supports. Uh, so you can set your team, and then you can also set your country. If you do exclamation mark country followed by your two-character country code, like mine is the US. So if I do that, uh, then in the overlay, uh, it's going to show it. And it did not work, Jakob. <laughs> so make sure it is, yeah. I th so like with the UK, the you actually need to use GB, which is Great Bitten. You can't use UK. I don't know if that's where you're from. Well, you, no, you're from Germany, aren't you? So is it DE, Deutschland? Are you from Germany? Am I offending you right now by saying that you're from Germany? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, what else? What else? My dye is fading. Yes, yes. My roots are showing as well. Um, hi. I got a remote job that's headquartered in Florida, but I can move wherever. You recommend Colorado? I hear great things. I love Colorado. Um, I do. I'm not from here. I've lived here five, almost six years now. There's a lot of people moving to Colorado. It's a good place. I don't know. If you like, if you like the outdoors, if you like hiking, um, camping, it's great for that. Especially if you live in Denver, it's only potentially only an hour away. If you like skiing or snowboarding, that's only like an hour or two away. Um, 
if you like beer, there is an insane amount of craft beer. Um, there are other things that are legal here that are not legal in other places. Uh, Colorado's cool. I don't know. The, so the cost of living, I think that's another thing to consider is the cost of living. Um, it's not the most expensive in the world. Like I've, I've lived in New York City. I've lived in Seattle. I've visited San Francisco. Those are very expensive places. Colorado is not that. You can find some inexpensive housing. It's still up there, though. It's not super cheap. Oh, you went to CU Boulder. Oh, you almost went to CU Boulder. Cool. Okay. <laughs> I, I'm getting sidetracked. Yeah, we're, we'll talk about pronouns next. Yes. So next up is uh, pronouns. Uh, so you can set your pronoun, your preferred pronoun. This, these are your options, anything in this list. If if you go by some other pronoun that's not in this list, feel free, to, feel free to send me a DM on Twitch or on Discord and we'll get it added to the list. Uh, we mainly are limiting it to this list so people don't, don't abuse the system. But if you want to set your pronoun, you can do exclamation mark uh, pronoun followed by your preferred pronoun from that list. Um, and then in the chat, uh, it will show your pronouns just like that. So I, I can know what you prefer. Uh, Mike says, I have a tech interview tomorrow and it involves five. You have to solve five katas? That's crazy. <laughs> uh, sounds like a Midwest version of Buffalo. Yes. Sure. I actually I have no idea. I don't know what Buffalo is like. If I come, we got to be roommates. I, I need my space. <laughs> you can live like next door if you want, but I, I, I not roommates. Um, Yes, you cannot be an Apache helicopter. Okay, um, so there's that. And then also you can see, you can set your status. You can see that Olaf has the status non compos mentis. I actually don't know what that is, but uh, that's their status. William's status is, this status is safe for work, which is a reminder that your statuses and your messages uh, should be safe for work. They should be appropriate. If they're not, you'll be timed out, potentially banned. Um, David Snyder's status is General Kenobi. Um, so if you want to set your status, you can do exclamation mark uh, set status. Um, howdy, partner. Do I have some CBC? What's a good one? Hoo-ha. <laughs> uh, and so if you set your status, then it will appear below your message just like that. Howdy. What's up, Anaboth? <laughs> Uh, next door to CJ, that'll be cool. I guess so. Just don't, just don't come over that often. I mean, every now and then, right? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, five katas in 45 minutes. I don't think they go below six. Okay. Yeah, so here's the thing. When I solve code katas live on stream, I, I mean, I guess it might be that you might want to be the same way in an interview, but I'm talking out loud, right? I'm talking through my thought process. I'm telling you why I'm making the decisions that I'm making, which is why it takes me longer to solve them rather than just solving the thing. Um, and it really depends on what they want to see. You should probably ask them ahead of time is be like, do you want to hear my thought process or should I just solve the thing? Um, because I mean, I <laughs> if when I'm not streaming, I, I fly through things because I don't have to say every single thing that I'm doing. I don't know. The first thing about coding, I just found your stream. Enjoy the good vibes. Well, thank you, Her Hercule. Uh, today is a good day to tune in. We're actually going to be doing some more beginner-friendly stuff. So maybe you can pick something up. I mean, maybe I can pique your, pique your interest. Is that the right phrase? I, I say words wrong and use them in the wrong context. But maybe I can get you interested in JavaScript today or programming. It means not of sound mind and hence not legally competent. <laughs> OK, nice. What's up, Code and Canuck? Um, I won't come often, only twice a day. Hey, it's too often. It's too often for it. <laughs> Is there any way to delete things? Uh, I think you can do exclamation mark clear status to clear your status. And I don't know if there's a way to clear. Th uh, probably not. <laughs> we'll, have to, we'll have to update that. <laughs> I only come for the hell. That was nice, Anaboth. Well, I'm glad you could be here. How do you deal with not being in the mood to code? Lately, it's been so hard for me to sit and work on my projects. Caffeine. <laughs> um, I mean, I'll be honest. Sometimes there are things that I'm asked to do at work that I don't want to do. But uh, got to get paid, got to pay the bills. So just, just kind of got to just kind of do it. But yeah, caffeine, meditation, get some sleep, take a break. <laughs> I don't know. I'm building a chat API using MongoDB to store the messages, but I just can't figure out a good architecture or schema. Maybe this can be a video idea. Uh, we're working on entropy chat right now. Um, and it, we are, uh, that's the wrong thing. We are using MongoDB. We haven't gotten very far on the, uh, the database design yet. 
but yeah reward yourself for your achievements uh non compost mentis awesome okay watching someone doing code goddess is boring <laughs> well capex you might be new here um i would i would uh I would think that it's not because a lot of people watch me do it. Uh, so maybe watching some people do code katas is boring. Um, but I've done this a lot. People, I like This is why I keep doing it because people keep watching it. <laughs> this playlist has 17,000 views. Each of the videos has several thousand views. I don't know. Uh, let's, uh, <laughs> let's, let's, uh, let's say hi to everybody. Um, uh, first, we'll acknowledge all the follows. Uh, Java. Clips or Clis, thanks for being here. Suman, thank you for that follow. Uh, Boke, thanks for the follow. It's Guigo, thank you for the follow. Uh, Manayam, thanks for following. And Hercule, and Yeti, and Int Jose, and Night Wanderer, and Zivuk, and Jewel, and Shiyu, and Classic Kronos, and Encore, and Just Us. Thank you all for those follows. What is a code kata? We'll talk about it very soon, but it's, it's basically a small coding challenge. Uh, it's small is a relative term. <laughs> so the, the past four episodes of code katas we were working on the exact same kata but it's because it was a very hard one there it's, it's you had to like not only was it hard there were just a there was a lot you need to do and i'm still not done with it but no two q like i've i've spent m multiple episodes on two q katas we'll talk about it in a second though and i am thank you for that posture check uh i just went to the youtube premiere and clicked and forgot that uh, I was wasn't actually live. <laughs> so many people do, and even you, like a uh, dad of Dom. You know, you know that I'm not live, and you still think that I'm live. Um, it's really funny how many people think that the YouTube premiere is actually live. But I need to do a thing really quick. I am live right now. Um solving code katas so here's the thing so this is a little script that will send a message in the uh premiere live chat oh it worked it was broken yesterday it was straight up broken work yesterday but it worked and so uh that just sent a message on youtube okay uh franz thank you for the hydrate um cheers yeah i've solved i think two or three one q katas and big dane thank you for the hydrate as well and uh, Sraven Pie. Cheers. And Shiyu. Thank you for that Twitch Prime sub. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, username unknown. Um, I am just but a man. And the bros. Thank you for the follow. And Creative Coder. Thanks for being here. Okay. Okay. Let's say hi. That's the thing that we're missing. That's the thing that we're missing. Uh, I won't lie. You seem like a really chill person. Well, I appreciate that. I am I am me, and that is all. Um, is there a um, an Insta fluff? Hello. I guess there's not, but here's what we're gonna do. Um, we're gonna say hi to everybody. So if you uh, say in the chat, hi, hello, hey, morning, afternoon, evening, howdy, uh, good day, coding hiyo, vo hiyo. Um, or Bogahe or Instafluff, love, Instafluff, <laughs> if you're an Instafluff sub, um, I will see your message and I will acknowledge you. I will notice you. I will say hi and then we'll uh, we'll get into this. We'll actually start writing some code. Can you say, I'm sorry, Vicus. I'll, call, I'll, I'll try to call you Vicus from now on. Um, say hi to me. <laughs> All right. We're going back in time 30 minutes ago. I'm Tom Eddy, said coding hi what's up i'm tom eddie let's 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 move over here uh, and mark how's it going what's up awaited and function drivers and five strand boga hey what's up uh, nameless blossom and nick tindall and danny lauren and shines love and marco and kabinks and Jakob. actually I, I might have missed your message Jakob. what what are you trying to set your country to or did you get it working i don't know uh what's up kevin uh and new in and sequel gordster better late than ever <laughs> what's up fluffy horse lips and electrothermal and lamau greetings from the dominican republic well hello welcome hello shirag and turtle monkey good morning good morning what's up mcbelly shelf and unfair how's it going hello the she boss and richard and greeny and el barto top of the morning top of the morning what's up jay get at you my day's okay uh oh yakov got it nice uh proxin how's it going hello shubam and Deadman made another stream. What's up, Blue Fin Sinking, Coding 60 Plus, and Vicious. 
Hola, bonjour. How are you this beautiful day? I'm doing pretty good. I actually got a decent amount of sleep last night. And hello, Danielle, and Drunk Time Lord, and Smiling Links, and Dobby, and Brayson. Have I ever integrated a reCAPTCHA in a View app? No, but I've done it in a React app. I'm sure it's similar. Yeah. Uh, what's up, Dr. Phantom, and Anaboth, and Rogue Soul, and Seba, or Seba, and Olaf. Hello again. How's it going? Uh, what's up, Dragon, and Urban Edge, and uh, Black Stock, and Coden Canuck, and Dhu and John, and, and Vicus. Vicus. Actually, you should. See, can you change your Twitch name to just be Vicus? Is that taken? I, can't, I always. So the. If you've seen me before, I kind of. I try to speed run this, you know? I try to say hello as fast as possible. And to just say the first part of a person's username is quicker for me, um, which is why I call you I am. But it makes sense that your name is Vicus. Um, <laughs> but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set up five minutes. So five minutes left just saying hellos. Uh, what's up, Thon? No, we're not going to touch the Bluetooth API, at least not right now. What's up, Flybanker and Slickwill and Nikos from Greece? Hello, hello, hello Paper CSGO and Azraj and Folky Bits and Milky Dev. We'll get another shout out for Milky Dev. He is a member of our uh, Live Coders team. Maybe his name is Lamb? I am? What? Salamat Puggy. What is that? <laughs> what is that, Howard? In Boga, hey. Um, uh, Armpie says, I'm glad to be back in the garden. Been so busy the last while trying to get an MVP out that I've been, that I've had to miss streams. It always seems like the blast push is crazy. It does. Uh, I feel the same way working at a software consultancy. And hello, Martin, and Lax, and Dev, and Suman, and Ex Coco Loco. How's it going? Hello, Spin, and uh, Suscoya, and Instafluff. Hello, hello. What's up, Florin, and uh, Two Fox, and William Cameron, and uh, T2HO, and Gehermicus. Hello, 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 Golden Way. Class is starting soon, so goodbye. All right, thanks for dropping by. Uh, hello, Nero in Scrimpy Square. And Hector and Classic Kronos and Sir Raven Pie and Miguel and Max Sturvin and Major Lift. I, so is anybody else noticing the fact that I constantly keep adjusting my, my, uh, my headset? Because um, I notice, and I'm trying to stop, but like they're popping out of my ears. I don't know what I can do. I don't know. I guess I have to get some like form-fitted custom custom ones sightseer is noticing uh, what's up shoe bomb and extreme techniker and hello me what's up yatek and jordan mike and john and cood hello 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 uh hercule who says i do not know the first thing oh yeah yeah we got you if you're still here we got you uh what's up ally post and developer and fishy coding and hictors and stasic and dad of dom how's it going hello elite rose and Th uh, Tikozer, Kusi, <laughs> and Didi Vet, and Sebastian, and Mr. Daniel F. and Mantis, and SP Dean. Hello, 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 Aaron, and Strawn, and Tarek, and Sightseer, and Ziggy, and Fieldbreak, and uh, Nasin. Nasana. Nasana. Nasanana. Nessanana Balik. Nessanana Balika. How's it going? I'm the best coding streamer on Twitch. Thank you. Uh, Nessanana Balik. That, Balika. That's how you pronounce that, right? Uh, hello, Black uh, Blackjack and the Ox. And I think in Laser and Moms. First time. Welcome, welcome. Hello, the bros and Acid Spark. Howdy. Hello, Sector and Eel and Leo. How's it going, MB Dealer and One Me and Effie? How did, did you greet me yet? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> hello, Effie. Welcome, welcome. Welcome back. Hello, she you. Um, and Limeotes, and Just Victor, and Sledge Dog. Is this tea drinking you're drinking available in Europe? I don't know. I honestly don't know. But I know there is uh, Club Mate, which is a popular drink among uh, hackers and the 2600 Club. Um, but this is available in Europe. It's the it's origi it originates in uh, Germany, um, and it's similar. I would say this is this is a little bit sweeter, and probably a little bit more carbonated. But this is very similar, and uh, this one specifically is the classic gold. You can't see that very well, but classic gold is just like the classic mate flavor. There's some other things in it, but it's very similar to club mate. Let's let's take a drink. <laughs> um. <laughs> Buy more than one, you won't like the first. Yeah, so that's it's it is an acquired taste. I'll say that. It's an acquired taste. And this actually tastes this tastes to me like a European cola. So I lived in Germany when I was a kid, and we had a soda delivery man. He would drop off a case of glass soda bottles. Uh and it I, I guess like European cola has more of a like a licorice flavor, almost like a like there's an anise in it or something like that. 
Um, it, this is kind of like it. I don't think there's any any of that in this. It just reminds me of that. Um, also similar to, uh, <laughs> I tried it once. I have not acquired the taste yet. <laughs> A very rare find. Oh, okay. Um, if anyone's had Red Bull Cola, so it's a it's a cola that Red Bull cre makes, that also has that very similar like European taste. Is anybody am I crazy? Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Um, like European cola tastes different, right? Right? I don't know. Okay, <laughs> Dune Drons, how's it going? What's up, Howard? In the mixed and guitar and uh, Huar and Tamik. Uh, and H Vibo and Cypher and Crispy Rebel and CC Gaming and uh, do you e do you even lift? What's up, Chromium uh, and Leandros um, and Zen? First time here, welcome. Hello, Shell Codes. We're almost done with with the hellos, but um, you probably got a shout out. But shout out to Shell Codes; they're a member of our live coders team. And uh, <laughs> they were last working on senior developer and 3x team uh, learns to type. Nice. Very good. We all got to learn to type at some point. Uh, is that what that said? I'm sorry. It moved too fast. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Very good. Um, and Skid Jing blows up. First time here. Sorry about the name. Trying to change it. <laughs> Do I ever uh, try to scrape LinkedIn? I'm a student. I need info from a thousand universities. I find difficult in trying to trick the CAPTCHA. Yeah, so we've um, we've been talking about this, us, me, and the mods, and we have mostly agreed that we shouldn't talk about circumventing measures like CAPTCHAs. Mainly because, like, it can be, uh, there might be a legitimate reason that you want to do it, but the it's a, it's a gray area. So we're not going to talk about this, and I have never tried to do this. But I appreciate the question. And hello, Karan Cherry and Dynamic Voyage and Cheese Balls, and that's Rad, Rad Cullen. And your boy, Hitbox, welcome to the show. All right, anyone that has not said hello, a cheesy stream. Oh, no, no worries. It's funny. It's funny. If So if, if I were me and I saw this, I would click this and I would drop a follow. That's what I would do because that's funny. <laughs> I I like it when – it's, it's funny to me when people like basically – it's kind of like a meme, right? Where people talk about like 10x developers and oh, it's great. It's good. It's good Good stuff. No worries. Um, you missed me. Mr. Demon Wolf, did I? You got to say hi. Say hi, Mr. Demon Wolf. It didn't show up. Um, but what's up, Archer Lurk? Hello is not a thing. What's up, Varun and Mario? Oh, you like my shirt. Thank you, Vicus. Uh, you can see it here. You don't got to buy it, but you can look at it. First time, Cobra James. Welcome to the show. What's up, Dev Arthur? Mr. Demon Wolf, I swear, Mr. Demon Wolf, I didn't see it. Oh. Look, did you say anything that's in this regular expression? Why doesn't this work? Well, <laughs> you were broken in the... Oh, are you not showing... You're not showing up at all, are you, Mr. Demon Wolf? Oh, no! <laughs> we, ha we have to fix this. Is there anybody else... Uh, it doesn't need the at sign. Is there anybody else that's not showing up in the overlay? Your messages are literally not in the overlay. Oh, oh, oh. Because oh. I'm filtered by hellos. That's why. <laughs> I was like, why is it showing up? No, 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 no. It was, it was because, um, it's because I was filtering by hellos. Oh, nice. You changed your profile picture. Yeah, that's you. Instead of the, the demon wolf. Okay. <laughs> Shadow ban. <laughs> All right, let's work. Let's do some code wars. So if you're new, if you are new to, um, uh, if you're new to Code Wars, you can go to CodeWars.com. Um, I'll show you this really quick, CodeWars.com. Um, and this is basically a place for you to practice solving coding problems. You can choose from many different languages. Uh, the, the languages you can choose also varies by the challenges because the challenges to complete are user submitted. Um, but they, uh, they're they nice. It's good stuff. Um, and when you sign up, you're going to be asked to complete a problem. And it actually... Let's let's make some YouTube content right now. I'm gonna make a video on how to sign up for Code Wars. All right, yeah. Let's get some some content emotes going. If you are a sub, uh, 
spam the chat with this coding content. Um, I feel like I'm missing. So am I missing something? Uh, Intrabe chat is not online yet. Am I missing something? I feel like I've, there's something I didn't do. I don't know. <laughs> I'll acknowledge the follows. That's something I... Oh, I didn't... I don't know. Uh, Bitmedic, thank you for that follow. Uh, just Victor, thanks for being here. The Mix, thank you. Uh, my Jins, thanks for following. Um, and uh, Aaron, and Clotic, and Do You Even Lift, and Strawn, and Andlim, and uh, Dev Arthur, thank you all for those follows. You missed saying my name. Well, what's up, uh, Tron Cherry? <laughs> thanks for being here. Where are the LEDs? I, that's potentially maybe what I'm thinking about, but... I don't, I mean, it wasn't directly, but let me, let me get those started up. Cause that's always fun. There was a five minute break redeemed, but I just started <laughs> and I'm on, I'm on a limited time schedule. Like I do have to work today. I'm just, I'm streaming now, but I'm going to work later into the, into the evening. Um, okay. Why? Why? It no work. Oh, it, it seems like it was like slightly unplugged. There it is. These are the LEDs. They are on my desk. What, what? Just got home from work an hour ago. I, I mean, I'm, I'm working from home. What? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, it's a full-time job. I, I'm a salaried employee, but put in 40 hours a week, pretty much. For the most part, sometimes more, sometimes a little bit less. Um, there's this. So these are LEDs. They're sitting on my desk. Um, oh, besides streaming. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> Aside from streaming, that's how much that's how much I work. Um, and this can be controlled by the chat, but the listener isn't running yet, so I got to do that really quick. Well, hello, AC. Thanks for dropping by. And hello, Mo Saeed. Um, what are we doing? We're going here. Cool. Uh, now, uh, in the chat... You can do exclamation mark LED followed by 8001. So just like you saw uh, someone said it. Um, so I'll do 5, 6, 7, 8. I'll do that. And it should turn them all off. So you can do that. It's a fun time. Now, um, let's let's get back into it. Uh, my, my father was stationed in uh, Bomberg, Germany. That's when I lived in Germany. Which I guess is southeast? I don't remember. It was a long time ago. Um, okay. And I believe that military base isn't there anymore. All right, is everyone ready? Who's ready? <laughs> um, it's Northwest. Oh, okay. Well, I know nothing. <laughs> How can you become a pro programmer like me? Uh, just practice. Uh, experience. That's about it. All right. See you later, ACs. Thanks for dropping by. Okay. Um, <laughs> YouTube content. We're gonna do. We're gonna do YouTube content. Uh, it's in Bavaria. Okay. Awesome. Um, we're gonna do YouTube content where I basically show you how to sign up for the Code Wars website because there's a small coding challenge once you get to the Code Wars website. Is everyone ready for this? Smile in the chat if you're ready to learn about Code Wars content. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Hello, friends. Welcome to Coding Garden with CJ. Uh, in this short video, I'm going to show you up, show you how to sign up on the Code Wars website. Um, so if you're if you've never heard of Code Wars, it is a place where you can practice and improve uh, coding by doing challenges um, and and practicing coding. Basically, uh, you can choose from many different programming languages. Uh, I specifically mainly code in JavaScript. I do other things, but mainly in JavaScript. So whenever you're signing up on the website, you should choose the language that you prefer. And uh, then it's going to ask you to solve a problem. And it says, this code does not execute properly. Try to figure out why. Now, some people have said this is kind of like gatekeeping. 
And it sort of is. You you basically have to know enough about programming to be able to solve this before you can even get into the website. But um, I think the other thing this is doing is it's showing you how the website works, right? So the, the, web, the way the website works is they provide a place for you to put your code in. Uh, you can click Submit. It's going to run some tests against your code, and then it's going to tell you um, uh, the output of those tests. So expected undefined to equal 1, expected undefined to equal 4071. So right now, our function is returning undefined. And because people in the chat have it, yes, uh, it's missing the return statement. So to fix this code, we need to put the word return right here, like that. Uh, and that should solve it. Yes, test pass. <laughs> um, and so, and then it's going to allow you to sign up for a website. So um, <laughs> we're giving you the keys to the gate. Yes, shell codes. Um, but the, so the thing, the thing about that specific problem is it, it's showing you how the website works. You put your code in, it runs the test, it gives you feedback. That's mainly the mainly the thing. Uh, you can then uh, link your GitHub account or, or create an account. But once you're in. You can start solving coding problems. Uh, and I'll show you my preferred way of, of sorting and filtering these. So once you're logged in, click on kata, and then um, you'll, you'll see a bunch of code katas. Uh, it's important to note the difficulty. So under difficulty, 8Q is actually the easiest problem. So if you're just a beginner, <laughs> I'm in. Nice. <laughs> if you're just a beginner, you want to start with 8Q. Uh, these are like introductory problems. A little bit harder than that first problem we saw to get into the website, but it's a good place to start and practice. Um, and then it goes up from there. So the, the lower the number, the harder the problem. Um, and just to give you some context, I mean, for I, I'm just a guy, but uh, we were working on a 2Q problem, and uh, I currently have done four episodes of, of Code Katas working on that exact same problem and we're still not done. So the the higher the the lower the number gets, the harder the problem gets. And it's relative. It depends on your experience and how you take in problems like this, all that good stuff. But let me show you real quick. Uh, I I prefer to sort by most completed, either most completed or uh, positive feedback. So the thing about this website is all of the problems are user submitted. So um, sometimes it's really hard to understand the problem that they're asking you to solve. Um, but if you sort by positive feedback or most completed um, or even popularity, you're going to find problems that are a little bit, or at least they're solvable, right? They're easier to understand the problem statement. Uh, I usually go by most completed. Um, and then you can choose your language. I, my language is chosen our, our JavaScript. And then um, you, here, I like to choose katas that I have not trained on. So this is going to show me ones that I have never seen before. Um, you could also choose ones that I've not completed if you want to go back and do that. Um, and then filter by difficulty. I'm going to start with an 8Q. I'm going to start with an 8Q, katas I haven't trained on, most completed. Do I get a bonus? Let's do this problem right now, and that will be the end of uh, this YouTube video. Um, so here's the problem statement. Uh, it's bonus time in the big city. The fat cats are rubbing their paws in anticipation, but who is going to make the most money? Build a function that takes in two arguments, salary and bonus. Salary will be an integer, and bonus is a boolean. If bonus is true... The salary should be multiplied by 10. If bonus is false, the fat cat did not make enough money and must receive only his stated salary. Uh, return the total figure the individual will receive as a string with the prefixed um, euro? <laughs> um, is that what that is? Is this a euro or is this a pound? Is this a British pound? People in the chat, help me, help me out. It's a pound, okay. <laughs> So either a, a pound, a dollar sign if you're in these languages, or what is this? Can anyone tell me what this? I I'm I'm ignorant of the world. Um, a yen. Oh yen. Okay, that makes sense. All right, so I'm gonna copy this because I don't have this key on my keyboard, um, and we're gonna go right in. So I'm gonna click train. This is my break timer. Let's take a quick stretch. Um, take a sip of water. Rust. <laughs> Great, yeah, and so um, you can see the same problem description on the left-hand side. You can see the code right here, and then you can see uh, all of the sample tests. So these tests basically tell you expected inputs and outputs. So when they call your function with 10,000 and true, um, they get a, what's the bonus if it's true? Multiplied by 10. Wow, that's a big bonus. So the salary is multiplied by 10 if it's true. Uh, and then the output should should be that. So. Um, Let's let's solve this thing. So we basically need to say, um, if they get a bonus, then we need to return a string 
that uh, has the sign in front of it multiplied by 10. So we could say return. Um, I'm just going to say, uh, let's put let's make a string with that sign. We need to add the salary, uh, salary, salary <laughs> multiplied by 10. Uh, and that should do it. So in, in JavaScript, it's actually going to coerce this number to a string and concatenate it. Um, otherwise, if they didn't get the bonus, then we just need to return uh, that with the salary itself. Um, salary, 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 salary. Uh, and this should do it. Okay, awesome. Test pass. Now, if you've ever watched uh, Code Wars, Code Katas with me, you know that I don't just solve it one way. There are many, many other ways to solve it, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. But this is it for this YouTube video. Uh, thanks for watching. Hopefully you'll sign up on Code Wars. Hopefully you'll tune in every other Wednesday where we do this kind of stuff live. And uh, thanks for watching. And, and join Code Wars. Get better at coding. Everybody say bye, YouTube. Uh, wave. Bye, YouTube. Smile. Oh, Carl Smile, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I'm glad to hear that, Razor, who says I really get positive ener uh, energy from your streams. Appreciate that. All right. Now, bonus content. Bonus content for people that aren't watching on YouTube. Uh, we're going to solve this in more ways. So let me, let me, usually what I like to do is uh, pull this code down locally so we can solve it in like 10 different ways. Uh, code katas. I believe that, yeah, this is, whoa. I feel like this is episode 60. Oh, gr see, Green David learned JavaScript by solving katas. Yeah, um, one thing I didn't mention is when you're sorting and filtering them, you can choose uh, fundamentals or data types and, and or like basic language features, and that, that'll help you practice some of the things in a given language. NG Berman says, as soon as I come home from school, you start streaming. <laughs> Welcome. I'm glad you could be here. Um, I really, I really feel like this is episode sixty. I need to, I need to confirm that. All right, see you later, unfair. Thanks for, thanks for dropping by. Um, I, sh I guess I should hide my screen. I mean, technically, I don't care if you see the stuff in my YouTube dashboard, but I don't think I'm allowed to show some of it. I don't know. <laughs> um, I guess I could just look at the YouTube playlist. Doesn't everyone else feel like this is episode 60? Uh, I'll show you how I do that, DQ, but basically I copy and paste the tests and bring them down locally. Uh, maybe not. No, this is episode 59. I feel like I'm not very good at managing my videos, and so I feel like episode 60 got lost in there somewhere. Oh well. Um, but here, I'll show you my dashboard. I guess. Yeah, yeah, why not? I don't see anything secret in here. Uh, first of all, I just made it to 85,000 subs. I'm almost 86. That's fun. Uh, in the last 28 days, I've gained 9,000 YouTube subscribers. Um, that's actually like 4,000 less than the month before that. Um, my views are down and my watch time is down. <laughs> I haven't I haven't published any of like speed runs or anything like that in the last month. Um, and those are usually the things that get the views because I mainly post like stream archives and stuff like that. Um, and then my most recent video had 2.5 thousand views. We can look at real time stuff. That's that's always that's usually fun. No, I don't make ad money. So uh, this this revenue is from YouTube members. Um, and the only reason it's that high is because there's one YouTube member that shows the tractor level, which is like ninety nine dollars a month. Um, yeah, the big money. I'm making hundred dollars a month on YouTube. <laughs> uh, let's see in the la let's see what, what videos people are interested in. So in the last sixty minutes, I mean, this makes sense. I'm actually premiering this video right now. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know why I'm talking about that. Let's 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 write this code. So um, let's make a directory for episode fifty nine. Uh, my profile name is W three CJ. Uh, I think I can. Yeah, I'll link this. Money, money, money. <laughs> Number one on tripping, on uh, trending. Uh, thank you, Paper CSGO. It says my speedrun crud was amazing. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's my code worst profile. Um, okay. Here's how I do it. So um, I like to create a file locally. I actually have an extension installed that gives me the slug name here because 
I have a script that I can run against all of my solutions, which generates an automatic readme and all that stuff. But all that means is I'm going to create a file with the exact name of that kata. So I'm going to create a file called that.js. So do I get a bonus.js? Um, copy the function that goes here. And then I'm just going to copy and paste these tests. Now, I could spin up a test suite. Like, I could convert these to just test or something like that. But usually all I do for, for like, basic problems like this is I just turn these into console logs. Um, so everywhere I have test.assert equals, um, I just make this a console.log. And then um, I use this tool called uh, Quaka.js. So Quaka will run the code uh, inside of your file. And anytime you have a console log, it's going to output those console logs next to your code. And so basically, th these are my tests. I, I, need, I need to make sure that the number on the right and the number on the left match up. And that means my tests have passed. Um, I guess I could also do something like this. Um, wait. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm wondering, like, why is it all working? It's because I already have code. Normally, normally I have no code. I was like, what? 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 Why is this working? It's because I literally ha I wrote the solution already. But th this is nice to see, right? Like I can see that my function is returning undefined. I see what the expected output is. Um, cool. Oh, the extension to get the slug. Yeah, that was created by Andrew Lane, I think. Uh, I just have it as a user script. Um, ba -da -ba -da. Uh, W3C is the World Wide Web Consortium. My name is CJ, and so W3CJ makes kind of sense because I build websites. I'm not, I am not a part of the W3C. <laughs> I am W3CJ. Um, no, that's not it. I don't think Andrew is here, but this is, I'll, I'll put it in, um, put it in a gist. Um, so I have, so I use this extension called Tamper Monkey. Tamper Monkey lets you create scripts that will run on any website. Um, this script in specifically runs on Code Wars and all it does is it makes a call to the Code Wars API and it replaces the ID in the URL with the slug. That's it. But, um, it's this. Can I get this dark theme in IntelliJ? Uh, possibly. I don't know. Does IntelliJ have a, like a VS Code theme importer? Um, regardless, <laughs> let's write, let's write some code. Um, Quagga? No, no, no. Quaka. We have a command for Quaka. That. So this, this is the extension that's running my code inside of the editor. Okay. So, um, in, in, in the YouTube content, we solved it this way, but let's, let's solve it a few other ways, right? Um, uh, one thing I'll do really quick for those of you that are new to, uh, to JavaScript is I'll use a template literal. So instead of doing string concatenation, uh, we can actually do it uh, nice and easy with a, a template literal. So use backticks um, like so. So I use backticks and then wherever I have some sort of expression, I do a dollar sign curly brace. And so basically what this does is it evaluates this expression the evaluated value then gets concaten concatenated into a string that has the pound symbol in front of it. Um, and then I can do the exact same thing uh, right here, but just don't multiply it by 10. And we still get the same output. Yeah. Um, is my net lagging? I have no idea. I have no idea. <laughs> so uh, this is a, another, it, these are very similar. This is the more like modern way of doing it with template literals. That said, I still use string concatenation every now and then in my code, if it makes sense. Like if it's a simple joining of two variables, I won't resort to a template literal, uh, but this is the more like modern way of doing it. Um, you could probably do a, um, I don't need to delete the other function. So this has to do with uh, hoisting, <laughs> and, but also the fact that this overrides the function itself. So because I'm using the function keyword, um, this function overrides this function, right? So I could return, um, let's do this, or return whack and uh, the code still works, right? Uh, because this is this is basically like overriding a variable, is all it is. is this is creating a new function that shadows that function, um, and so that uh, we, can, we can do that. So 
it's okay to define the function multiple times. You wouldn't do this in real code. Like in real code, you define a function once. Uh, but in this, in these examples, I'm just showing multiple different ways. So it's, but it's actually okay to redefine. Um, new things. Yeah, we're learning. We're here to learn. That's great. Um, how else can we do this? We we could do it. We could do it in line. And uh, for that, we could basically do a, a ternary. I'll show you two ways to do the ternary. So. Um, we're, we're going to turn this into a one-liner. So we're going to say return some expression, right? But what is that expression we want to return? So if bonus is true, then we want to do this. Otherwise, we want to do this. Um, so this is how a ternary works. It works with a question mark and a colon. And basically, uh, this expression is evaluated. If that expression evaluates to a truthy value, then this code will be executed and ultimately returned. And the other, if it re resolves to a falsy value, this code will be executed and returned. So we can basically just take our expressions, right? We can take this. So if bonus is true, we return that. Um, otherwise, we return this, like that. Uh, and this works in the same way. We, we see all of the, the same output, which is good. Um, and another interesting thing is instead of doing it like this, I could put that ternary inside of the template literal, right? So right now I'm saying if bonus is true, create a string that has the salary multiplied by 10 with a pound symbol or create a string with just the salary. But what if I did this? What if I said, um, I'm going to move this ternary into the, the template literal. So the expression that I want to evaluate here is actually a ternary. So if bonus is true, salary times 10, otherwise uh, salary, sal salary, salary, <laughs> like this. And so now, now we have a ternary inside of a template literal uh, that results in the same, the same output. But basically what this says is create a string that begins with a pound symbol. And then if bonus is true, concatenate to that string salary times 10. Um, but if bonus is false, concatenate just the salary. Uh, I, I love JavaScript. <laughs> do, do you like JavaScript? Why not? No, I love JavaScript. JavaScript is great. So that's one way of doing it. Um, we could also, we could get we could get weird with it. Let's get weird with it. So let's say uh, we always want to put the salary and then we want to multiply the salary times something, right? We want to multiply the salary times some value. Um, if bonus is true, then we multiply times 10. Otherwise we multiply times one. It's just, just itself, not salary. I don't know why I keep typing that salary. <laughs> Salary, um, celery, uh, and so this also. Th there's a million different ways to spin it. I mean, d does this actually count as a different way of solving it? It's just a way, different way of thinking about the problem, because uh, we we basically always have the salary, and then um, we're going to multiply it times some value. So we're going to multiply times the result of this expression. And if bonus is true, we're going to multiply times ten. But if bonus is false, we multiply times one, which is the salary itself. Um, so that's fun. Uh, someone just asked, why do I prefer template literal over string concatenation? I think it really depends. Um, in most cases, you're concatenating strings that are a bit more complex than this. It's more than just um, two, like one variable or one expression. You have multiple variables that you need to all put together, and that's when template literals make a whole lot of sense. It's very similar to like the printf function in other programming languages. Um, 10 raised to the salary, uh, to, 10 raised to the power of bonus. Because if it's raised, so if it's zero, then it's one. That could, I like that fishy coding. Let's see. Let's see if that works. So uh, basically what this is going to do is it's going to convert this Boolean into a number. When we convert it into a number, we get either zero or one. And then when we, when we raise 10 to that power, we're either going to get uh, 10 or one. It works. Look how weird that is. <laughs> nice job, fishy coding. Um, to, to show you what's happening here, I'll do this. Um, we'll put this in a variable. We'll call this the power. And let's just log the power. Um, put the power right here. Power. So uh, when, uh, tr when bonus is true, the power is 1. When bonus is true, the power is 1. When bonus is false, the power is 0. Um, and then 10, log the power, and then 10 raised to the power of 1 is 10. 10 raised to the power of 0 is 10. Yeah, so this works too. This is this is a very interesting solution. Instead of multiplying, you could just add a 0. I like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why, why do the maths? Why do the... Well, yeah, that's how maths work. When you multiply something times 10, you just put a 0 on the end. I love it. That makes it super simple. Uh, and syntax wax. thank you very much for that gifted sub. Uh, let's... 
let's do th this one. This one is is uh, most similar to what we're about to do. That not if it's zero already. Oh, that could fail. Yeah, you're you're totally right. If it's zero, then we just want to keep it the way it is. Um, but <sighs> basically, we need to put the salary, and then we need to put another variable here, which is if bonus is true, then we want to concatenate uh, a zero onto it. Otherwise, we want to concatenate nothing. Um, this is this is extra. There we go. If your salary is zero, a bonus is least the least of your concern, yeah. And so basically all this, this doesn't do maths. This just takes a zero and puts it on the end of the string. I want a 10 times bonus too. <laughs> uh, yeah, Taeg says uh, salary multiplied by 10. Uh, if bonus is true, just leave it. Otherwise, divide it back by ten. Yeah, we we. I think I'm. I think I'm done. But this. There's a million different ways to spin this. I think the other thing to, th another way to do it, which I didn't really talk about before we started doing this, ternary and and template literal thing, is you you could do something like this. Um, you could say, uh, let's say. Instead of returning here in bonus, so instead of saying, so if bonus is true, then we'll say salary times equals 10. So if bonus is true, we're going to multiply the salary times 10, and then we're going to uh, concatenate the salary onto the end no matter what, right? So this is kind of a different way to think about it, like modify the variable first and then just do what you got to do down at the bottom. Right? Right? <laughs> Why did the boss give him a bonus? He does not even code. Um... Do prime subs still pop up on the overlay? They should. They should. Um, I think every now and then there's a bug like... Uh, well, did I not see Shiyu? Maybe I did see Shiyu. I don't know. Uh, yes, yes, yes. So vamp... So the... The... What do you call it? Um, uh, this is called the exponentiation operator. <laughs> uh, this was introduced in... ECMAScript 2015. Um, but yeah, this is basically raised to the power. Um, before we had this operator in JavaScript, we just had to do math.pow. There were there was no built-in operator. But you can do math.pow 10 and power, and that'll raise 10 to the power of power. Uh, but yeah, this is the exponenti exponentiation? Exponentiation operator? Did I spell that right? No. <laughs> power. Um, hey, yeah, you're welcome. Uh, thanks for asking. Pow. Uh, let's, if, what if we search for math.pow? Are we going to find it on MDN? Let's see. Uh, best worst answer if statement per input. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah uh, I can talk about that, Jonathan. Uh, the basic test will pass. But one thing I didn't mention is there are actually more tests behind the scenes. So uh, these are the tests that, that are surfaced to us. But whenever we click attempt, it's going to run more tests beyond that. But yeah, that's that's like a, a classic uh, TDD kind of thing where you just have... well. Uh, the first part of TDD, where you're just getting the basic code done, you're doing the least amount possible to get the test passing, you might have a bunch of if statements, um, but it, it likely won't pass. All right. Uh, are they going to link us to the exponentiation op operator? How do I find it? I don't like the POW operator. Unknown operators can be scary. Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. So some, some and especially since it's newer in JavaScript, it's only been around for a few years. People haven't seen it before. I was trolling. Don't do it. No, no. People do this. <laughs> so, uh, every now and then we play a, a Clash of Code here, and uh, people will solve it that way and get like 50%, right? POW operator. I, need, I guess I just need to look up math operators and see uh, JS, X, maybe I spelled exponentiation wrong. Can I literally search for star star? Not found. <laughs> Here it is. <laughs> I just spelled exponentiation wrong. Thank you, uh, the, the log GL. Um, yeah, so the exponentiation operator returns the result of raising the first operand to the power of the second operand. It is equivalent to math.pow, except it also accepts big ints as operands. Oh, that's good to know. Yeah, big int is also a newer thing in JavaScript, which basically allows you to have big integers. <laughs> like, um, 
are they what are they 64 bit integers or something like that they're they're really big very big very big very big integers um cool uh check out exponentiation so like a long uh, but no a long has a decimal place big ints i believe don't have decimal places they're literally they're they are integers um math dot kapow okay <laughs> So that was fun. Um, I am going to um, is JavaScript like uh, long, long in C plus plus double double. So I'm not I'm not sure exactly what you're asking, but in JavaScript, uh, hey <laughs> NovaScript, thank you for that three month resub. Just had my first technical interview yesterday. Well, how'd it go? Hopefully it went well. You're smiling, so I hope I, I, I hope it went well. Um, but. In, in JavaScript, mainly, the only number type we have is floating point. So uh, when you have a number in JavaScript, it is a floating point number. There are actually are no integers. Um, I mean, and, and that's the classic classic JavaScript. Now, like I just mentioned, there is this big int type, um, which is allows you to create an integer which isn't a floating point number. But for the most part, when you just create a, ver a bare number... Um, in JavaScript, this is actually a floating point number. There's no way to make that an integer without passing it into like the big int uh, constructor, something like this. Not a constructor. Yeah, you just pass it into big int. 32 bits? I don't know. I don't know. That's a that's a really big int. <laughs> Um, yeah, but yeah, in JavaScript, you, you have no choice, uh, for, in, unless you do something like this and in JavaScript, bare JavaScript, there is no type annotation. So you wouldn't do something like uh, big int. Yeah, that, that doesn't exist. It's, it looks kind of like that in TypeScript, but yeah. Uh, and what's up Mickey? Thank you for the hundred bits. Yeah. And then there's typed array. All of these are somewhat newer to JavaScript. A lot of people don't know about them. Like a lot of people don't know about big int. They don't know about typed arrays. These are usually things that are used um, to get like really performant JavaScript for doing something like uh, compiling C code to run inside of the browser or something like that. Went well, it was more of an OOP design interview. Nice. Very cool. Longs in C sharp are the same as big ints in JavaScript. Really? Interesting. I thought a long was half of a double. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyone know how to subtract two strings in Java? Uh, convert them to numbers first, probably. Right? Cast them to a number. That is TypeScript. Yeah, not JavaScript. Um, yeah. So bitwise. Yeah, yeah. We're getting we're getting in the weeds now. Um, but yeah, you can do bitwise operators. Like when you do the. The unary plus on a value to turn it into a number. I mean, technically, this casts it to. Let's see. Yeah, that actually keeps the decimal place. But I believe unary plus does something with. I don't know. I'm talking about stuff I have no idea about. We're done here. <laughs> Let me pick one to su to submit. Uh, I'm actually going to submit this one. This is my favorite solution. Don't ask me why. I just picked it. But now I can take this code, drop it on Code Wars, click test. It should pass the basic test because that's what we were testing locally. But now when I click attempt, it is going to run it against more than just those tests. 47 tests. Pass. <laughs> Good job, everyone. Let's submit that. And we'll move on to uh, one more. Two more. Tildy tildy. We've beaten the 8Q to a pulp. We're done. Yes. <laughs> um... It looks like, and so here's the other interesting thing about Code, Bo Code Wars, is uh, after you've submitted, you get to see other people's solutions as well. So you can see this is like the top solution or the most common solution. Uh, they have the bonus. I I'm so used to being able to stretch, but my light over there is broken, so the thing is, is off. But um, you can see that they're doing the ternary with bonus on the outside and then multiplying salary inside, very similar to what we did. Um, this ultimately is similar to the one that we submitted. Yeah. Yeah, and actually, uh, the the interesting thing about JavaScript is you don't need to call to string uh, because um, the string or the the when the JavaScript engine sees a plus sign um, and it sees that the op one of the operands is a string, it's going to convert 
the other operand to a string. That's a type coercion, and that happens by default, which is why we didn't need to say to string. Now I can stretch. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll go through all the redemptions. So that's fun. All right, we're going to do, let's move on to a seven queue. Um, and um, we'll, we'll go from there, but I'll um, take a quick stretch. But yeah, uh, Jakob, it is called Quaka, like that. Quaka. Uh, this is really cool. And I, I, need to buy, I need to buy the pro version. I still haven't bought the pro version. But um, it's awesome. It, it, it logs, it outputs your code. So the, the pro version has more things you can do to output your code. Like by default with the community edition, um, you can't import your own modules. You can only use your own code, which is why this works for me in Code Wars because I'm not importing other things. But yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, I think it's like a one-time $40, $50. Perpetual with free updates for a year. Yeah, so you get the to use the latest versions for at least a year. It, it's honestly not that bad. I should pay it. <laughs> I, should, I should just pay it. Um, but let, let me uh, review these redemptions. We'll acknowledge the follows, and then we'll jump into another kata. Uh, and Kud, thank you for that stretch. And um, Mark, thank you as well. Buy it now. Eh. <laughs> Later. <laughs> so, someone donated a while back, a while back, and they were like, "Quaka Pro Fund." Yeah, get spend my my YouTube money. Um, Leo, thank you for that hydrate. All right, see you later, Jelly. Thanks for hanging out with us. Thoughts on Expo versus Pure React Native? I haven't done anything like that recently. Uh, the last time I was in that world, Expo was basically the the way to go. It provides so much more for you. I don't know if that's still the case. My YouTube big bucks. <laughs> um, and thank you, Mr. Demon Wolf, for the hydrate as well. And Olaf with the stretch. Yeah, we, we've heard of Time Sort. We, we talked about it on stream once. Um, and it was... Uh, it was funny. It's funny, funny to talk about. Uh, we haven't done anything with the pixel art just yet. Bluefin, also thank you for the stretch. Yeah, Mr. Demon Wolf, show us. What did you make? Show us something cool. And Sector with a hydrate. Cheers. Posture check. Um, and cheers to Rastrian as well. Okay. I'm not, I keep skipping this break <laughs> because I, I'm only streaming for a certain amount of time. Um, how about we possibly take a break after the next, the next one? Um, and what? Thank you for that follow. Uh, sorry, everyone. Sorry for, for hitting you. Uh, SB Salva. Thanks for the follow and Swifty Chops and Loose Grace and Gooner and Fishweird and uh, Sanat Sanatans and Aeon and Jan and Onyx Shot and Mystique and Mr. Dino and Deathlunk and Buzz and uh, Karan Hari and Erkan and Tundra and Makil and Yuvara and Aztec and uh, Frankovian and Frank and Vom. Thank you all for the follows. Welcome to the Coding Garden. No any good EDE that I don't have to download. Code Sandbox? Weekly goals. Wait, what is what is it, Mr. Demon Wolf? Is this a... What is it? Oh, thank you, Sector, and thank you for being here. Uh, is this just loading really slow? <laughs> I can't see it. Oh, a content loader, I see. Uh, so Code Sandbox is super interesting. This is basically like VS Code inside of the web browser. Um, and you can create sandboxes and, and write codes and such. So that's that's one thing to check out. You don't have to download it. Um, you can also check out uh, like CodePin, um, uh, which is mainly just for front-end projects. Um, 
But if we create a pin, you can see you put your HTML, CSS, and your JavaScript, and then it, you see the output on the right hand side. So you can check out CodePin. Uh, Code Sandbox is for like bigger projects, and it it can do things like um, running your build tools like Webpack and, and different things like that. Uh, one a new one that that I heard about that um, uh, I saw on Reddit is called what's it called? Is it any pin? Anybody else know what I'm talking about? It's like CodePin, but it allows you to use um, uh, backend languages as well. StackBlitz is uh, uh, very similar to Code Sandbox, yeah. Did anybody uh, see that thing that I'm talking about? Yeah, REPL, yeah, I haven't used REPL.it that, that much, but um, they, they, they do allow you to choose different programming languages and um, you get a basically a, a, an editor in the browser and a terminal in the browser. The nice thing about this one that I found is um, you basically get root access on a, a virtual private server. Um, whereas with REPLIT, it's more limited in what you can do. And, and the, the nice thing about having root access is you can install dependencies, you can uh, open ports and, and spin up your processes and stuff. Yeah, I, I used Cloud9 before it was acquired by uh, AWS. Um, that's probably another option. I've heard of Gitpod. Dev environments built for the cloud. Look at that, VS Code literally running inside the browser. It's pretty cool. I want to find, I want to find the thing. Yeah, uh, this is my keyboard. Here. Click it. Uh, and if, yeah, there's a link already. You can, you can see all the other gear I'm using too. Glitch is another one. Yeah, yeah. Um, these all are like different levels of IDEs as well though. So like some of them, the, the ID, wait, no. Some of them, the IDE isn't as, um, uh, full featured it's not like a vs code ide um but you do get to write any language i don't know give me i'm gonna find i'm gonna find this thing because it's really interesting yeah github workspaces um is another thing that's coming out. So it's basically from GitHub where you can choose a Git repo and then you instantly get dropped into uh, an in-browser code editor and you can, I think you can even run the projects too. But what's up Murdoch? Welcome to the show. I'm doing pretty good. Panda, thank you for the bits. Coming from YouTube, first time live. Living, nice. Thanks for being here. Um, I'm trying to find that site. Did I read the good news posted in the mod channel? No. Should I read it now? I'll read it now. I'll come back to it. It's a lot, <laughs> but I'll definitely read it. Um, I tried in using an arrow function on Code Wars, but they insist on normal functions. It, it depends. It, it it depends on how they're trying to run your code, because sometimes it's okay to write an arrow function, but other times they potentially need to bind the function, and if that's the case, then uh, they would want you to use the function keyword. Um, okay. Tool. I'm using... Google right now to try and find this. Something posted in the last week. Um, I'm, ba I'm basically trying to find this thing that's like code pin, but it's for backend stuff as well. Forget if it was on like r slash web dev. Yeah, it's not Gitpod, but definitely check out Gitpod. That's another option. Uh, maybe it was in my dreams. No, it was in the, it was in the mobile app. I was just scrolling. Uh, any fiddle. That's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, thank you, Ace Ninja. 
I was like, it, I thought it was something like any any pen, but no, it's any fiddle because it's very similar to uh, JS fiddle. Yeah, check this out. The easiest way to code online. Um, so they have um, um, uh, templates that you can choose from, but the cool thing about it is they literally spin up a container that you have root access to and um, you can install dependencies, you can open up ports, all of this different kind of stuff, and it's, it's a VS Code editor, but... Uh, some of the templates that you can choose from are like a Python backend or a Ruby backend or a Java backend, um, all that stuff. And the the other nice thing about it is um, they give you a, a publicly accessible URL. So so some of these other things, sure, you can edit your code and, and all of that. But you, with this, you can basically map a port to a subdomain and give that to people to uh, to test out the website while you're while you're de developing it. Can you host your website there for free? Sort of. Um, I don't know if it actually goes to sleep, but it's a it's a small so for free it's a small instance. You get half a CPU and half a gig of memory. But if you pay it, this doesn't exist yet, but eventually you'll be able to pay five bucks a month and then get a larger instance dedicated to yourself. And I believe that instance will be always running. So technically you could host your site there. Um, I do know you can for sure host things on glitch.com. Uh, this is kind of for beginners. Um, and they have an, a web-based editor and such. Why though? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, what I don't know why we got sidetracked like this, but here's here's an interesting thing. So uh, there's a VS Code. Um, I forget what it's called. It it, it uh, mon it's not it's not an exactly the Monaco editor, but uh, I think actually I think it's called VS Code Server. So this is an open source project that basically allows you to run VS Code inside of your web browser. So this is Code Server. Um, this is totally open source. You can just use this yourself. I believe they have it wrapped. Like there's a service that offers this as well, that offers basically VS Code in the cloud. But you could install VS Code Server on your own server. Like let's say you spin up a VPS somewhere. You can install Code Server and then go to a URL and actually edit the code and access the files on that server from within the uh, the web browser. So what's interesting about this is um, you can use... Um, what's it called? Google Cloud Shell? Yeah, so coder.com I think is like the, yeah, this is, I believe this is the enterprise-y wrapped version of Code Server. I believe that it's just using Code Server, which is an open source project. Um, okay. Uh, I, you know what? I'm, I might just do a quick video on this because I was I was looking into this a while back and it's kind of amazing the fact that any so any um any Google account can actually uh log into Cloud Shell for free and it's basically like a VPS in the cloud um and it's free it's free <laughs> um but the so yeah, code space code spaces is nice. Well, I, I don't I don't want to do this. Um, I kind of just want I don't want to do the free trial. I literally want to just go to Cloud Shell. Maybe can I host my website there for free? <laughs> usually, usually wants to do some free stuff. Um, I I'll give you the free service. So Glitch.com has is totally free. Uh, Heroku. Uh, dot com has a free tier. Uh, Versal is it's serverless functions, but you can also do static websites. It's completely free. Um, the pricing gets into if you want to like uh, register domains or do some other things. Netlify is completely free. There are a ton of free ways to host your website. It depends on what tech you're using, but yeah. Um, all right, I I want to start the let's start the free trial. <laughs> let's go. Um, Let's see. Hmm. Hello. Why? Why am I doing this? I don't know why I'm doing this. Um, but what, what's nice? So here, but here's the here's here's the interesting thing. I think altogether is you can log. You can use Cloud Shell for free. Like it's saying that I'm signing up for a free trial, but Cloud Shell 
Cloud Shell itself doesn't cost any credits. It's free. And then over <laughs> procrastination over 9,000. But once you've set up a Cloud Shell account, it's basically like a free VPS that you can SSH into. And then if you set up code server on that, it's basically like your own free version of coder.com. Um, but it's running on your on uh, like a Google Cloud Shell, which is also completely free. Are you on my, I, have, I have to enter my billing info. I forgot what my PO box is. Actually, this could be, I think, okay, I'm going to log into Cloud Shell. I'm going to set up code server, and then I'm going to solve code katas inside of that code server. How does that sound? That could be fun, right? Yep, you can run Node. You can install, it's, it's a new Ubuntu machine. You can install anything you want. Yay? Yay? <laughs> um, I believe it, it potentially it potentially goes to sleep or it slows down. I don't know. It, obviously, with if something is free, there's going to be some some limitations. But yeah. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. Hopefully, hopefully, um, hopefully this will get you going. So technically, if you really want something easy and free, Glitch.com is going to let you do Node hosted for free um th but the nice thing about this is you get access well i guess technically on glitch.com you have access to an ssh uh, access to a terminal as well i don't know yeah so that's the thing that i was thinking about acid spark is people that that don't have access to uh like a legit like a, a laptop that can run uh, a code editor or different things like that could use something like cloud show and still be able to like code over a mobile phone connection um something like that <laughs> You've derailed the entire stream. I don't know. I, I got excited about this. Um, give me a second. Is it bad to make a waker on Heroku? Well, the th the thing about Heroku is even if you're using the um, even if you're using something to keep your instance up, you only have a limited number of hours per month. So eventually, you're going to run out of hours, and then your service goes completely down. Uh, Glitch is for beginners because it it makes everything really really easy. Um, you technically can create more serious projects on it, but the like it varies, but for for me, I prefer to use my own development environment, right? I prefer to use VS Code. I prefer to use my local terminal and all of that. But with Glitch, you're kind of forced to use the web browser, which is why I think it's geared toward, more towards beginners. Um, there are some tools that allow you to write code that syncs with Glitch, but it's not officially supported. What they meant by Waker is so. With Heroku, your instance will go to sleep the, the, on the free tier, but there are services that you can use that will like automatically ping your server, and by pinging it, they keep it up, so that way it doesn't go to sleep, so it keeps it awake. Sub badges are really elegant. Oh, thank you, Mr. Dino. Um, okay. Yeah, and it's it's not necessarily an or maybe it could doesn't really even have to be a cron job. It could just be a a, a timeout that just like keeps pinging it. Um, all right, let's let's see what happens here. Let's create a cloud shell. Okay, I'm gonna show you this. So, uh, I so I guess the the tricky part is is I did have to sign up for Google Cloud Platform, and I did have to add a credit card to get the free trial. So technically, you still need a credit card to sign up for the free trial. It, it didn't used to be this way. It used to be that you could just go directly into Cloud Shell, but uh, let, let's do it. Here, I'm going to click Continue, which should launch the Cloud Shell terminal. Provisioning your Cloud Shell machine. $300 of credit on your account. Is that what I get for the free trial? Hello, Victor. 
I'm doing pretty good. That's cool too. But I, I was I was trying to find things for like for people that maybe don't have a credit card or don't have a fast internet connection. Like what are ways that they can code things? But Cloud Shell is free forever. This 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 will not tap into your your credit. It's just free. Uh, let's open it in a new window. Why not? I am one of them. <laughs> <coughs> so after it's provisioned it for the first time, it, it, it will spin up instantly. You can install VS Code on Android? What? What? Yeah, I thought about that, Litho, is uh, providing... So for people... I mean, maybe it's a channel point redemption, but I could give them... Um, access to a server that they could SSH into, something like that. It, it gets tricky, though, right? Because you want to make sure people are doing legitimate things on your server um, because it's it would be my server and I'd be responsible for whatever's done on there. But I thought about that. How to install VS Code on Android. Let's check it out. Bad idea. <laughs> well, here's the thing. I've been doing this for like two and a half years, close to three years, and there are a number of people that I trust, a number of people that watch the channel and are fans of the channel, and I trust them to do the right thing. Um, and those are probably the only people that I would let use this this service. Uh, because, yeah, it's a bad idea that, yeah. Um, okay, so they're using, so I, I've used the terminal on, on Android before. Ah, they're installing Ubuntu on Android. <laughs> uh, Joan Derp, thank you very much for that gifted sub to 201 created very good um how to, how to install vs code on android first step install ubuntu that's actually really funny um, and it's not going to work on all uh all android devices um Okay. Oh, does it say a specific? Okay, so here's the thing. I used to have a Samsung phone, and Samsung has this thing called Samsung Samsung Dex, which um, basically allows you to plug your phone into a screen, and you get a desktop-like environment. And they had like a subsystem where you could install Ubuntu. I think this is based off of that. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, so I've and so Samsung Dex is super cool, but it's only supported on like some of um, more of the more like the more latest um the newer Samsung devices, which limits the audience, right? Because people that would need something like this probably have an older phone. I don't know. Yeah, I mean it's crazy because like I had so I had the Samsung uh nine, so Note nine, and I mean it has a ton of RAM. And it has like what eight processors or something like that. So it it can it can it's like a little computer. It can run Docker and all that good stuff. Okay, this is taking much longer than I thought it would. <laughs> um, let's see. Boost Cloud Shell. Oh, I can look at my usage quota too. Okay, Cloud Shell has weekly usage limits. If you reach these limits, you'll need to wait before you can use Cloud Shell again. Okay, so you can use this for fifty hours a week. Uh. Which is a lot. I mean, I guess you can't you you can't exactly host a website here, but it's great for like a remote development environment. Um, Google Cloud provisioning in a nutshell. I swear, the last time I did this, it was like almost instant. Um, and here's the other thing you can do is you can boost it, and if you boost it, that actually makes it faster. <laughs> no one button solutions. Yeah, it's great. I mean, um, ten hours a day. Like, who's going to spend more time than that? The Note series is insane, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so the Samsung Note 9 was the first Samsung phone that I'd ever used, and I'm actually never going to use a Samsung phone again, mainly because they, they've they taken all of, all of the services that, like, Google provides, and they've basically built their own services instead. Um, and so not only am I giving my data away to Google, I am now giving it away to Samsung as well. And I prefer to just give my data away to one company rather than two. And it's also extremely hard to customize Samsung Samsung Android phones. Um, like even 
Uh, like I, I don't even need root. I just like to install custom ROM, e custom ROM even without root, so that I can add some like UI tweaks. And that was very, very hard with Samsung. Um, so now I'm just using a Google Pixel Two XL. I think it's not the latest one. The one, but one before the latest one. I think maybe I'm two versions behind. But this is awesome. Uh, the just the, the stock ROM is like very much like stock Google, and and I love it. One plus. <laughs> I'm in VS Code 65 hours a week. Yeah. Yeah, I prefer. Yeah, I prefer to give away all my my special, all the details about me to just one company, not multiple. Yep. Wait, am I using Nova Launcher? What am I using? I'll tell you the launcher. I use a launcher called Niagara Pro. Um. I guess I was okay. So, the thing I like about it is you see your icons. I realize this is really it's hard to see, um, but along the left hand side it gives you alphabet the alphabet, and you can actually just scroll, and uh, instantly get to the apps that begin with a certain letter. And that's how I like to use my phone. I have my main apps listed here. If I want to go to an app, I just choose the letter and click on it. I can do it. I can do it one handed. And that's pretty much all I need in a launcher. I don't want weather. I don't want a calendar. I don't want notes. I go to apps for those things. I don't know. This is the stuff I come here for. <laughs> um, if one has it, the, mo the other most likely has your data as well. I, I would disagree. I mean, it, it depends on what you're willing to give up and what accounts, accounts you create and stuff like that. Any advice for new streamers? Um, uh, just do it. Be consistent. Have a schedule. Be kind. Um, yeah, that's it. What else? Uh, the launcher is called Niagara. What if I have 10,000 apps and I can't remember the name? Then you have too many apps. That's, that's how you solve that problem. You know, uninstall some apps. Okay. Um, I am now going to... gonna. Oh, okay. <laughs> it provisioned it. It just didn't connect me. So I just created a new tab. Uh, look at this. I, I'm now in a web-based uh, Linux uh, environment. And I believe I have Ubuntu. Does anybody? What's the Linux command to tell me what what distribution I'm on? Does anybody know? Yeah. So they've they've provisioned a home directory for me. Now install Arch. <laughs> uh, no LSB modules are available. So it is Debian, Debian Buster. Uh, but is it is it Ubuntu, or is it just Debian? Does that mean I just have Debian? Is it just Debian? It's just Debian. It's just Debian. Ubuntu is based off of Debian. Cool. So we, I have myself a uh, a Debian machine here, um, and I can I can kind of do what I want. Um, so I don't think Node. Oh, actually, yeah, Node is installed by by default. So if I do Node V, let's see, we have version ten point fourteen. Um, but what's nice about Cloud Shell is anything that is in your home directory will be saved across sessions. So right now I'm I'm in my uh, I'm in my home directory, and if I put things here, they're going to be saved across sessions. Um, anything that's outside of that, like in uh, larger installed programs and stuff like that, um, will not be. So I pretty much just have to do everything in my home folder. But let's say I want the latest version of Node. I'm just going to use NVM, which stores everything in your home folder anyways. Um, so NVM is Node Version Manager. Pre-installed Node. Yeah, yeah. Version 10. But we want we want 14. We want to be on the bleeding edge. Um, so NVM is really nice um, because this will install a Node Version Manager, and it just lives in your home directory. So if I do this, you can see it creates a directory in my home called .nvm, and that's where it's going to store uh, Node versions. Um, and then I can install 14. So I'll do NVM install 14, and that should give us, what's the latest, 14.11. Yeah. Uh, so it's installing Node. And then... I don't know how much storage you get. Probably a few gigabytes, right? Right? This network is actually extremely slow. I'm very surprised at how slow this network is. Actually, let's do this. Let's boost it. So one thing you can choose is say boost Cloud Shell. Uh, boost mode temporarily increases the power of your Cloud Shell VM. Once activated, all sessions will be boosted for the next 24 hours. The usage of Cloud Shell and boost mode is subject to our regular usage limits. The feature is experimental. 
Oh, I'm not going to restart my machine. Might be five gigs. I don't know. Oh, I don't know why I'm waiting. I can just open a new tab. And it should it should be a tab into the exact same instance. This is way too slow. Things have changed. I tried this a very long time ago. Um, and things have changed. Well, we'll just wait for it. Okay, so I'll, I'll check the disk space. Uh, yeah, you get what you pay for, which is nothing. We've, we've paid literally nothing. Uh, Murdoch is saying five gigabytes of persistent disk storage. That's good. Um, that's why I use Volter. What is Volter? Is that a VPS host? Oh, okay. Yeah, but here, the, the, the thing about this is... I'm not paying for anything. This is just a cloud shell thing. Like, technically, I could spin up a VPS and do all of the same stuff that I'm doing, but this is nice because it's free. It's, and technically, what you're supposed to use this for is like a shell to provision and manage all of your uh, your Google Cloud Compute resources. So. Uh, so this is just called Cloud Shell. Yeah, and so th that's basically what I was going to show, is I'm going to install Code Server on this Cloud Shell server, and then we're going to code in the cloud. Code in the cloud. Um, paid with data. Yes. So this is free because I've given Google access to my life. Um, what was I going to search for? Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll link you to the, the basic sign up. Uh, what I just figured out is you actually do need to sign up for the free sh for the free trial. But after you've signed up for the free trial, even after your credits are expired, Google Cloud Shell is completely free to use. There you go. GCP free tier. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> free is nice. Yeah. If yeah, if you're not paying for the service, well no, if if you're not paying for the product, you are the product, right? I think that's the saying. I don't know. Oh, we're saying that the um this has a free tier that's free forever. All Google Cloud users can use select Google Cloud products like Compute Engine, free of charge within specified monthly usage limits. Yeah. The the tricky part is if you're someone that doesn't have a credit card at all, you can't even try the free tier stuff because you can't sign up for the free trial. I don't know what's wrong. <laughs> like there's we we can run a speed test, but this is uh this is uh, insane how slow this is downloading yeah i saw that that show being advertised on netflix i didn't watch it because i already know i already know <laughs> half a megabyte per second <laughs> uh, no worries that wait legend boga hey thanks for being here yeah well let's let's solve a kata while this is going i wanted to set up an environment so i could solve a kata in the cloud but uh we'll wait we'll wait for this to, to finish running um all right we're gonna go into a 7q We've sorted by most completed katas I haven't trained on. Uh, let's look at the maximum multiple. Given a divisor and a bound, find the largest integer in such that in is divisible by the divisor, in is less than or equal to the bound, in is greater than zero. Wait, what? In is divisible by the divisor. Which one's the divisor? So given a divisor and a bound. Okay, so the divisor is two. The maximum bound is seven. And we need to find the smallest number um, seven or less that is divisible by two. Right? I think that's what we have to do. <laughs> this is worded weird and it's mathy. Um... Largest number? Below the boundary. Find the largest number below the boundary, right? Find the largest multiple of the first parameter smaller than the second. Yes. This is the more understandable way of phrasing that. Thank you, Ally Post. <laughs> um, is bound always bigger than the divisor? I would say so. I would hope so. 
let's do it. Um, now, I will say this: if you're if you're new to coding, and um, if you're new to uh, all this kind of stuff, it's not all math. It's absolutely not all math. I, I can I can go weeks at work without actually having to doing any more advanced math than like addition or multiplication. Um, this in particular, we are going to have to use math, but this is I feel like this is not real world coding for the most part. There are some jobs where you will do that kind of thing, but uh, the job that I do, which is a as a full stack engineer, um, I don't do things like this. But it's fine. We're gonna we're gonna stretch our our, our math brains and uh, try and solve this. So let's create a new file called maximultiple.js. Um, we're gonna take this function. This is just arithmetic. It's it's still it's division. We still got to do division. Yeah, I mean it's going to be pretty easy. We we iterate from a number down. We're going to check if each thing is divisible. The first one we find that's divisible, we're done. But it's still math. I still had to think about it. Um So yeah. Wait, you're a senior developer? I'm a chief. <laughs> I'm a chief developer. I I don't even know if that's a thing in other at other companies, but my title is chief full stack engineer. Um I would consider myself a, se a senior developer, right? Right? <laughs> uh, what's up, Chief? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I made that title up. They wanted to give me the title of uh, uh, architect, but I was like, I write way too much code for you to call me an architect. I still do architecture, but I want to be the chief, the master chief, full stack engineer. <laughs> Um, but yeah, uh, thank you to Karan who says, uh, I learned more from CJ as compared to my entire college sessions combined. I don't know how true, I, I feel, I, I, you probably learned some things from me, but there's probably a lot you don't learn from me as well. Um, and maybe it's just because we have fun here. Yeah, you don't have to be here. At college, you kind of had to be there for the most part. I mean, it's, you're still out of choice, but you're paying for it. I don't know. I appreciate you though. I'm glad that you're learning things. Is that higher than principal? I have no idea. So principal is usually like somebody at a company that is, uh, they've been there a long time. They, I, I have no idea. I literally have no idea. I guess it's a, a, a kind of about the same. I don't know. What's below junior? Project manager. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, senior dev is someone who can code with little or no guidance. Sure. But, it, but it's more than that. It's also um, not only doing things with no guidance, but having – it's you really can't be a, a real senior dev without experience because you, you learn from all of your experiences. It's not just about uh, having worked on large apps or read about how large apps should work or uh, taken a course on uh, system design. It's, it's actually doing it and having the experience of doing it um, that makes you more of a, more of a senior. Because I, 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 I know some people that have read a lot of books or watched a lot of videos on YouTube and they think they know a lot, but they haven't actually put it into practice, which is a, a, a very different thing. Lord CJ Baron of Full Stack Engineering. I think I'm going to go with that. <laughs> Next time I get a raise, I'm going to ask if they can change my title to that. Um, what do you want us to call you? Code God. <laughs> Junior, senior, principal. Uh, I mean, I've seen I've seen architect use as like the so like junior, mid, senior, architect, principal, that kind of thing. Yeah, thought it was based on pay scale. So here's the thing, people. Some people. Some people try to hire a junior dev, but they're or no, they try to hire a. Um. They call it a junior dev, but they're asking for like three years of experience and they want to pay you really low. Um, so it's just because they don't want to pay you what you're worth as somebody with a lot of experience. I don't know. Um, I don't have to be here, but I love being here. Nice. <laughs> um, having the ability to solve problems you didn't produce yourself. I, I could see that. A senior dev has failed more times than a junior has tried. Yes, exactly. You learn from your failures. You absolutely do. A senior dev guides other devs to write the best code and knows the definition of the word best to use in whatever scenario applies. That's the thing. It's different in every scenario. And there's a lot of uh, newer devs that 
think they know because they've read a lot of books or they've heard opinions from other people. And so they just try to push that, but they don't take it from the perspective of like really assessing the situation itself because it, everything depends. It depends. Um, best is a relative term. It all depends. And if you have the experience, you you know that. What does an architect do? Usually they design systems and architect them. I don't know. All right. Uh, we got to write some code, though. They'll give you the title or the raise. <laughs> Omnipotent coder. <laughs> Uh, where's the team lead? Yeah, so team lead um, is usually a senior developer. It's like a team lead is a type of senior developer or maybe even a type of mid developer. It, it depends. This has been super informative. Great. Uh, <laughs> they hired me as a junior to pay me less, basically. Yep. <laughs> a junior architect. It's interesting because like it, it varies. Yeah. So like it, you could have been potentially like an apprentice, right? So there was a senior architect, but some of the uh, duties that maybe they didn't want to do, they had they passed off to you and you learned from them. It's a different way to think about it, though, because a lot of companies won't call anybody an architect unless they have have a lot of experience or, or they've been there a while. Um, similarly, uh, a lot of companies won't. Um, wait, what was it? I was going to compare this to something. Oh, yeah. Uh, back end debt. So like for whatever reason, it, it, this isn't the same way everywhere you go. But a lot of places consider back end development senior development. So uh, you get hired as a junior dev and you're basically not allowed to touch the back end. You can only create front end things um, and you have to be like a mid or a senior to even touch back end code. That, I mean, that's wrong. Obviously, like there should be uh, a lot of people, I mean, even juniors can do back end. Even juniors can code back ends, too. Um, but it, some companies are that way. Yeah. I once read a book about surgery. I'm a doctor now. It depends. Yeah. So if you, if your answers to questions don't start with it, it depends, then you are, you're not a senior, I would say. I don't know. Um, it depends. <laughs> well, uh, hello, Eudaimonia. Thanks for dropping by. Team lead is a role, not a title. I, I agree. Okay. Um... <laughs> Your title is master software engineer. My level is manager, but I'm referred to as a lead dev. Interesting. Hey, I'm a senior developer because I do back end. Yeah. Even interns can code on the back end. <laughs> um, yeah, so I mean, that's the thing to think about. Like, if you are working on big, serious stuff, you kind of need the experience to do it. I don't know. You can't just. I don't know. We, we need to write some code, though. I'm almost caught up. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Murdoch, for that PSA. Make sure the words you type are safe for work. All right, see you later, John. Thanks for thanks for the gifts earlier, and have a good day. Um, what is a game developer? Is it graphic? Is it a programmer? They usually... I actually have no idea, but they're probably coding game logic. They might be coding game server logic. Um, it, it depends. It, it, <laughs> it depends. Uh, I'm a full stack in senior dev because I can code in PHP, JavaScript, C Sharp, C++, and Lua. Yeah. A team lead is good ex at explaining too. A team lead who is the best dev but can't explain to others is not a team leader. For sure. You got to be a teacher. Like whether or not you want to be a teacher, you have to. <laughs> Especially, so the other thing a, a team leader or senior dev is doing is they're, they're mentoring the people under them. And it's really hard to mentor without being a good communicator or, or a good teacher. So yeah, it's part of it. Yeah, they're they're absolutely both hard, especially when you when you talk about modern front end web development. It's not just pages with animations anymore. It is actual application logic in your front end code. Like if you look at some of the larger React applications or Vue applications, I mean, it, it's kind of sad, honestly, how complex they are. But they are very complex. Like you need to be a fairly experienced coder to even understand all of the the things that are happening with front end state and stuff like that. Um, I don't know. I, I see some React apps though, and I and I just I just shake my head because they're so they're they're so much more complicated than they should or need to be for the kind of thing that they're doing. I don't know. It, it, the same thing kind of goes with Vue as well, but you can't express yourself in a less complex way. 
I don't know. It depends. Okay. <laughs> we do. Hey, I, I, I agree. Um, if you're, if you're in the discord, uh, we have an emote ideas channel. Throw that, throw that in the, in the discord. Why does everyone not feel the need to show off their title? <laughs> so a team lead is a senior dev with great soft skills. Yeah. The thing is, when I see the term soft skills, yeah, I guess I guess I'm good with people. I guess I am. But also I am I don't consider myself a good talker. <laughs> like I don't I don't I'm not I don't talk good. I don't consider myself like good at like chit chat or just like uh like BSing with people. I'm not good at talking about uh inconsequential things. And so in the real world, I come off as socially awkward because I I'm just not good at that. Uh, but I am good at talking about the things that I know and love and things that I understand. And I'm, I'm good at teaching those kinds of things. So if you can, if you consider those soft skills, then yes, I have those soft skills, but, uh, I am, I am not, I am, I am extremely socially awkward. I will say that I'm not good in those kinds of situations. All right. There's a lot of chats, but we gotta, um, we gotta write some codes, but you are, <laughs> um, but are you a good people? I don't know. All right, let's, let's solve this problem. So many people are like trying to solve this problem. Okay, so uh, the task is um, we are given two numbers. We are given, uh, oh, actually, we're going to solve the problem, but I'm curious, is this done yet? Okay, this is done. Oh, no, it failed. All right, well, since it failed, I'm going to go ahead and um, boost this cloud show. Oh, yeah, we'll start up Quokka too. I really want to see you code that max multiple function. Um, we'll, we'll get there. I, I pretty much always use, okay, that's rebooting, fine. Now, uh, we are writing a function. It takes in two values. The first one is the divisor, and then the second one is the maximum bound. And we need to find the largest number uh, less than or equal to the bound that is divisible, evenly divisible by the divisor, right? So um, it, 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 here's what I'm gonna do. So I'm going to, um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna iterate, I'm gonna iterate from the bound down to zero. Really from the bound down to the divisor itself. Because if it's smaller than the, than the divisor, then it's not divisible by the divisor. Divisor. So I need to loop from, for instance, from seven down to two, or from 10 down to three, or from seven down to 17. Um, and then inside of this loop, we'll say uh, if the current number is divisible by the divisor, return the current number. <laughs> That's pretty much it. That's how we'll solve this thing. So iterate from, from the bound down to the divisor. So I need a loop. Uh, from, did I say that? From 17 down to seven. Did I say that? I don't know. But we need a loop. So I have a, a for loop. Uh, we'll set uh, our iterator equal to the bound. So it's gonna start at the bound. And then we're going to go while i is greater than or equal to the divisor. And then on each iteration, we're going to decrease i uh, by 1. So that's going to give us uh, i is 7, then i is 6, then i is 5, then i is 4, 3, 2, etc. Um, so now inside of here, we'll say if, the, uh, if i mod the divisor, so this is how we get the remainder of the division. So this is this is going to divide i uh, by the divisor, and whatever the remainder is gets returned. So if that remainder is equal to zero, then that means it is evenly divisible. And if that's the case, we're going to return uh, the divisor. Um, is it the opposite? No, it's divisor. Wait. No, we, we need to return i, sorry. <laughs> we need to return i. Um, yeah, and this this seems to solve it. Yeah. So we're, we're returning i because that's that's the maximum possible thing that is divisible by the divisor. Um, so this works. I've made some assumptions here. Like I am assuming that the bound is always greater than the divisor that they're passing in. 
Um, yeah, and I'm using minus equals one because my my uh, my linter prefers it. I think the main reason is um, actually, I guess my linter isn't running, or is it? I don't know, but the thing about I minus minus is there are some implications like I is technically accessed before it's decremented. And so my the style rule that I usually have basically says, don't do that. Do this because it's more explicit because we know that this says I this is basically I equals I minus one, whereas the other one isn't as clear. Um, oh, yeah, default return. Yeah. So what happens if we 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 don't find a divisor. Uh, I don't know. It's guaranteed that a divisor is found. Look at that. So they're telling us we don't have to account for that. So um, it's ba basically we will return a value from within this for loop. They mentioned zero in the problem description. Let's see. In is greater than zero. In is less than or equal to the bound. In is divisible by the divisor. Right, and that, that's the main thing. There's a difference between minus minus i or i minus minus, and um, the the style rule basically says do this because it's explicit and people can expect what that's going to do versus knowing the difference between those two. Um, question from Paranoid Android. It's a big one. It's a big question. <laughs> uh, I have a question. There are so many dependencies we should use in Node. Isn't it possible to use them from a CDN instead of downloading all of it? And also, so many dependencies are similar or same packages and bring them to multiple times. Uh, if we use them from a CDN, wouldn't it be good to optimize the whole situation? Um, I would say you probably don't want to use the use them from a CDN because um, your Node.js code is running on a server, and if those CDN links potentially get compromised, then um, your Node server is compromised. However, um, you're downloading all of your dependencies from NPM as well. Like in the real world, you typically don't run NPM on your production server. Like you don't run NPM install. You actually package up all of those dependencies. So that way your deployed server knows what version of your dependencies that you're getting. Um, but uh, NPM actually resolve these types of things. So if, if you have two dependencies and those two dependencies are dependent on the same module, there's only going to be one reference to that module. Now, where it gets tricky is if you have two dependencies and one dependency is dependent on the depend on another dependency, but that has uh, is dependent on a specific version, and this other de dependency is dependent on a different version. Then the two different versions are actually going to be installed. But Node.js takes care of handling multiple things that have the same dependency, um, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, yeah, I don't know. Hopefully, that sort of kind of answers your question. <laughs> Um, C style loop should be avoided in general. Well, what about getting the remainder from bound and divisor, then return the difference between that and two? Yeah, yeah, that could work, but it's math, and I don't, I don't know that. But um, let's try to do it. Somebody, some people in the chat were mentioning it earlier. Um, uh, let's see if I can deduce how French drop is saying it. So, what about getting the remainder from the bound and the divisor? So. So if I say, oh, I, that makes sense because it's the distance to the closest divisor. Yeah. Okay. So if I say bound mod divisor, that's going to give us the remainder. So that gives us the remainder. And then we just need to return a bound minus remainder like that. So that should work. It does. Ah, it's a cool way to think about it. So whatever the remainder of the division is, is the distance from the bound to the next divis divisible number. So we just subtract that from the bound. I mean, I mean, technically, we could write it in line, too. We could do this. Look at that. Maths. Maths. Tabs or spaces. Two space tab. Oh, thank you, Paranoid. <laughs> Uh, math dot floor of bound divided by divisor times divisor. Yeah, yeah, that's another way to spin it because uh, it's how many times it's even div divisible multiplied by the divisor would give you the actual value itself, for sure. All right, do we have a cloud shell yet? No provisioning. <laughs> it's I I had no idea it was going to be this slow. Oh, congrats, Ed. Can we get some some hearts, some congratulations in the chat for Ed? Got a job as a front-end developer. 
Hearts! Congrats! Great work. Ta-da! Nice job. Which only works because you guaranteed an answer. Yes, because we're guaranteed an answer will be found. Yep. What's an opinion on mid-roll ads Twitch is forcing? I don't know. I really don't even pay attention to that. I wish I didn't have any ads at all, but I don't think I can. I can't right now. Um, I mean, I don't think I can ever, <laughs> but uh, I just I just leave it the way it is. I am. I don't ever run ads. I let the ads pop up when they decide that they should. But yeah. Okay. Do we? How, how can we not? <laughs> Why don't we have a cloud shell terminal yet? This is insane. <laughs> this is, yeah, I, I could, I definitely could, or like open a support ticket for partner support. Um, but that's how Twitch makes money. So I don't see why they would um, disable ads for a single channel. I don't know. Yeah, they have to make some kind of money. Somehow, <laughs> we still don't have a cloud show. Okay, I think I'm gonna. I think we're going to. Um, uh, we're gonna call it a loss for whatever reason. Cloud shell is not behaving the way I expected it to. So that's a thing. What are we using cloud shell for? I was just gonna install code server. So code server is basically uh, VS Code running inside of your web browser, but code server would be running on this remote machine, and then I'd be able to actually code on it inside the browser opening a new tab oh, that's what i did a second ago it didn't, it didn't work did mvm break it i don't think it would it shouldn't have anyways it was having like internet connection issues uh one thing i did was um i boosted the server which caused the server to restart or at least they need to provision a new one um, oh yeah, we could see, are there any errors in the console? Not just a bunch of warnings. Can't access property style. This dot screen is undefined. The page settings are the look. What? The content security policy could be off. <laughs> it, it was working a second ago though. Confirmed. Boost makes it even slower. Ah, oh, you're very welcome, Ed, and congrats. Glad, glad to hear you. Got a job. Well, we're gonna stop talking about that. <laughs> Though I'm actually curious if I, well, I, I was gonna say we could install Code Server on any fiddle, but any fiddle, uh, is it basically is does give you Code Server. Um, what do I want? Uh, just give me a Node.js server. There we go. Starting project instance. Look at that. We got a bash cell. Um, unit, is this how we did that thing earlier? It's running Linux. Uh, what was the, the tack command? I forget. Man, command. <laughs> There's no man pages. What? <laughs> LSP release dash A. It's Ubuntu, yeah, Ubuntu 18.04. So, I mean, this is interesting. We have, like, literally a shell here. We could write our codes here. Uh, this project is going to last us an hour. Um, this is super interesting. Down detector is reported for Google Cloud. Okay. Um, that's great. Why did I do this? I don't know. I'm done. <laughs> See you later, Karan. Thanks for hanging out with us. Um... Okay, I'm going to submit my max multiple, and then we're going to choose one more, and then, then I have to go, because I do got to work and eat lunch and all that good stuff. I'm going to submit this one. This is a very elegant solution. I like this. Um, so here on Code Wars, we'll paste that in. Click Attempt. Nice. 106 test pass. Submit.
app get installed, man. Okay. I'm not going to do that, but that makes sense. Because <laughs> it it's probably like a slimmed down version of Ubuntu that doesn't include all the extra stuff. Hello, Sog. Welcome to the show. Um, okay. Did I hear about Cybercode? It's a game. Does it, no. What is it? Cyber Code VS Code? An MMORPG web game that looks and disguised as VS Code. <laughs> Enter your email here to sign up. Really? And, and like, that's the only place I can cook, click or sign in with Google. That's really interesting. This is hilarious. Okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sign in. Uh, wait a second. I'm going to sign in with Google. Did it work? It has worked. <laughs> Enter your display name for the character. Lord CJ. Click to confirm. There's like a messaging system down here. Thank you, Sag. Um, all right, what? Click save to save your changes. That's great. Uh, length must be greater than four. Only characters, numbers. Save. Greater than four? Greater than or equal to four? Okay, I'm in. Click here to view your inventory. You can equip your loot from here too. So if we click on inventory, um, we can see um, that we have nothing equipped. That's pretty cool. If we click on our stats, can we modify our stats? No, we can't. They're just, they're just outputted there. Um, all right, I'm in. Um, and hello, Bamboo. I'm doing pretty good. I'm just trying out this thing, which is like a MMORPG that looks like a code editor. Um, click to travel to a different location and level up. Go to Hyper Train Central Station. Here we go. Oh, look at all these people joining. That's pretty cool. Okay. Um, go to Flory Station, Kashi Station. Yim okay, we're going to go to Flory Station. Here we go. Um... Go to abandoned industrial area. Go to main arsenal. Let's go to the main, uh, the abandoned industrial area. There are some nearby enemies. Battle in nearby enemies costs item durability. Uh, scan nearby enemies. It's going to refresh them. Interesting. Um, I, I think is I don't have anything equipped. So if I go against this, uh, level one thief. Let's see what happens. Uh, Thief 1 has a health of 59. I have a health of 64. So I have a primary attack, which is going to do 24 of damage. And I have no special weapons. Let's just do a primary attack. Let's see what happens. Ooh, got him. His attack... <laughs> Look at all you, peop all you people. Um, his attack was much less than mine. Let's, let's attack him again. I think we're we're gonna get him. Look at this. We're gonna we're gonna take. Wait, is the is the point to kill him? Am I supposed to bring his health all the way down? Uh, let's just assume I am. Sick. The enemy dropped a trash upper armor cache. <laughs> so I think you can click it to put it in your inventory. Uh, nice. Okay, I'm gonna go somewhere else. Uh, this is this is fun. This is pretty cool. I'm done with this, but it's fun. Um, what live streamer? <laughs> How do I send a message? Are there really that many people that have gone to the website? If you signed up on this website, just type one in the chat. Oh, somebody set their name to W3CJR. <laughs> They're typing one in this chat. <laughs> Type one in this chat. <laughs> W3CJR is my imposter. Nice. Um, yeah, there's like four or five people. It's not that many. 
Okay. Yeah, this site is cool. Check it out. It's, it's cool. All right. I'm going to go now. How do I leave? I guess I could close the tab, but I want to do it the official way. Um, um, what do I do? <laughs> Click on your user icon. Where's my user icon? Oh, here it is. Log out. There we go. Nice. Nice. <laughs> That's, this is really cool. This is really cool. Okay. Uh, we're going to choose one more kata, and then I'm going to go. Sum of angles sorted. Yes, no. How? I like this. Okay. So, uh, complete the method which accepts an array of integers and returns one of the following. Yes, if the numbers in the array are sorted in ascending order. Uh, or yes, ascending. Yes, descending if the numbers in the array are sorted in descending order, and no otherwise. You can assume that the array will always be valid and there will always be one correct answer. Great, let's do it. Um, how many katas have I completed? I don't know. We can see. Pretty much every code kata I've done, I've done live on stream. Like I don't, re I don't really ever use this website outside of streaming. Uh, solutions. Oh, wait, I think we probably... Uh, 216. I've completed 216 katas. I think. I mean, that's how many solutions I have here, but does that count for... Uh, oh, no, it just says 216. Yeah, it's 216. <laughs> um... Compare the sorted arrays with the provided array via json.stringify. Uh, we can do that. I'll say I'll tell you why that's a, a, hor a horrible solution. <laughs> but yes, we can do that. Um, basically, it's how you how you would do a uh, a, a deep comparison. Uh, and and actually, for those of you that are new to JavaScript and new to arrays, um, uh, we can we can talk about a thing. So in I mean, this happens in most programming languages. Um, two different reference types that contain the same thing, but are technically different, are not actually equal to each other. So um, if I have uh, an array A that has the values 1, 2, and 3, and I have an array B that has the values 1, 2, and 3, these are two separate arrays, but this is initializer syntax. So technically these are two different arrays. So in memory we have this array and then in memory we also have this array. Technically those arrays have the same values inside of them uh, but if we go to compare them we're comparing basically their uh, the variable reference. We're not comparing the internal value of them. So in the chat what is this going to log? If I say a double equals b what? Or if I do a, a, even this, a triple equals b. So the first one we're saying is going to be false. Some people are saying it's going to be true. What about the, what about triple equals? False too? They're both false, no matter what. So even, even with double equals, so uh, in JavaScript, the double equals is a loose equality. It will potentially coerce the operands if it needs to, if they're not the same type, whereas triple equal leaves them the type, leaves them the same type, and if they're not the same type, it's automatically going to be false. Um, but uh, they, they should both be false. I think they're both going to be false, uh, and if they're not, then I there's a lot that I don't know about JavaScript, and I mean there are there is there is a lot I don't know about JavaScript. <laughs> but if this is if either of these log true, my life is a lie. Yeah, they're both false. And the reason being is that the underlying reference is different because these are two separate arrays. It's a reference data type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, okay, so that's, that's example one. Um, and now we know that they both log false. And the reason is in memory, they point to two different things. And when you're comparing two reference types, you're basically just comparing their memory locations. Now, I have to go to work, but I'm going to go to work after this. Yeah, so there's that. Now I'll, I'll give you I'll give you something else. Um, let's say, and actually I need to turn off I need to turn off Quaka because it's it's gonna it's gonna uh, give you the answer. I don't want to give you the answer. I want you to, to think about it. 
I want you to use your JavaScript mind. If I say uh, A equals that array, and then if I say B equals A, uh, what's this going to log? And what's this going to log? And why? Interview questions. Pay attention. <laughs> It's really, it's like kind of like JavaScript fundamentals. Fundamentals. True. False. True. Both true. True and true. Now, because because of the previous example, um, if you're new to all of this, you might you might think that it's going to work in the same way. They're both false because it's two arrays. But now they're the same reference. Yeah, just like White Legend said, they're, they are the same reference. So I create a variable A, but then I assign B to A. And, and when you do this, all that's, it, it's, it's basically a pointer. It says B is pointing to the same memory location as A. It's pointing to that array. So when we compare them, it's the same memory location, regardless of loose or, or uh, strict equality. Um, and this is different than this because these are two separate arrays. In memory, they're two separate arrays. <laughs> this is my, my light. I accidentally hit my light. They're two separate arrays. They have the same internal values, but they still are two separate arrays. Um, whereas in this scenario, it's one array and both values point to that same value in, in, uh, in memory. It's the same reference. Yeah. Good call. Yes. True. And so, um, I would say like, uh, these potentially are interview questions, but they're also like JavaScript fundamentals. Like I would say you need, if you're learning and working in JavaScript, you need to internalize this because it's, it's going to come into play when you're writing programs. Um, and I, and this is one of the kind of things that you should memorize. I, I always say that like you should look up documentation if you need to, but fundamental language things and memory things, I think you should, you should know and understand because it's, it's going to make you a better developer if you if you can if you can write code and then um predict what the output will be before actually running the code you're in a good state because that means uh you're 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 working with the javascript engine you are you are being the javascript engine um i guess i don't know okay I'll remember it now. Nice. Uh, so when, where this comes into play is because for this specific problem that we're about to solve, is it sorted and how? Um, it, basically, your mind is its own little compiler. Uh, and I mean, and that's be one with the JavaScript engine. Um, but one potential solution to this is that the array sorted is we actually just sort the array. We sort the array and then compare it to the input array. Actually, that breaks down in multiple ways because sorting in JavaScript, the built-in sort method uh, modifies the array. So that would break, we'd have to make a copy first. <laughs> but um, we, if, if we wanted to sort the array, compare it to the original, and then compare them, we couldn't just do double equals to compare the two arrays to see if it is a sorted array. Um, we couldn't just do this because they're two separate arrays. And let's uh, actually, let's try to solve it that way, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you, basically, you need to convert it into something that can be compared in that way. Yeah. So I like this is the way I would solve it every day, every single time I would solve this as a scan of the array. It's big O of n, worst case, because you're just looking one value at a time. The moment you find a value that's not either increasing or decreasing from the previous, you know that it's not sorted. If you make it all the way to the end, you know if it's ascending or descending. Yeah, we can do it in a single pass, but I want to approach it from the aspect of like sorting the array and then comparing it to the original to see if it matches because that I feel like beginners would approach it that way, I think, rather than thinking about looking at one value at a time, um, right? Maybe. <laughs> um, all right, I'm going to pull these, pull these tests in now. Um, do both. Yeah, I'm absolutely, I'm going to do it both ways. Um, let's see if I can command or uh, I can do this. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Uh, it's like a little, I just did a little magic trick. Um, but here, here are our examples. So we're going to pass in this array, and our function should return yes ascending because the values go from one to two. Um, and if we pass this in, it should say yes descending because the values go from 15 down to eight. And if we pass this in, it should say no because the numbers four and two are out of order and 30. It's not ascending or descending, it's just a bunch of numbers. 
Yeah, and I have to make a copy. Yes. Okay. So let's 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 do this. We will uh, sort, make a copy, and sort the array uh, ascending. If the input array is equal to the sorted uh, ascending sorted array, uh, return that. If that's not the case, then we're going to do the same thing again, make a copy and sort the array descending. If the input array is equal to the descending sorted array, return the output. Otherwise, uh, return no. So this is one way of solving it. I'll say this. I don't I don't like this solution because there's a lot of added complexity here because we have to sort it multiple times. This comparison here is where this kind of logic comes into play. We can't just say, does it equal the other thing? We have to do something special. Uh, so yeah, let's solve it. So uh, make a copy and sort the array ascending. So the, the way I know of making a copy is just to slice the array. So a slice can pull out and we'll make a copy of a subsection of the array. Um, if you pass in no arguments, it creates a copy that is the whole array. Yeah, so um, we could say the ascending is equal to that. Um, there are multiple ways to do this. So you could use slice. You could also, um, yeah, use the spread operator. So what this is going to do this is known as the spread operator. This is going to take all of the values in this array and spread them out to be a value inside of this new array. Uh, anytime you see square brackets, you are creating a new array. This is initializer syntax. So we're creating a new array, and then we're taking all the values of the other array and spreading them out into that array. That's one way to make a copy. Um, someone mentioned concat. Yeah, you actually could do you could do something like this. You could say I have a new blank array and I want to concat all of the values that are in the um, the original array. And actually, let's call the let's call these copy because <laughs> that's what the that's what these are. We haven't we haven't sorted them yet. Um, this is harder to understand than an intuitive algorithm. I would I would I don't know. I, for me, yes, I would I would do a scan algorithm, but I feel like I, the, as many beginners as I've worked with, I feel like they would approach it in this way. Like they they know that they can sort an array using the built-in sort. They're not going to write the function themselves, and so they might solve it this way. I don't know. I don't know. Um, concat space in a one-liner scan. Wait, what? I don't know. There's a lot of ways to copy. That's all we're saying here. Um, but what I'm going to use is. We'll use this one. This is this is like the modern way. Um, I work in React on a daily basis, and we do a lot of do a lot of spreading. Um, okay, so I have the copy, um, and now I want to make the uh, ascending sorted. And for that, we can use the sort method. Now, uh, by default, the sort method will convert. If you don't pass in a comparison function, it will convert every item inside of the array to a string and then compare them as strings using their Unicode values. Um, what that means is, uh, I'll show you. I'll show you right now. Uh, let's look at the ascending sorted array. We'll start up Quokka. Um, and for example, let's look at this one. So, um, and this one. When I sort them ascending, technically, <laughs> Uh, 15 is smaller than three or seven because it begins with a one. This would be like comparing the name, um, uh, AA versus, or the string AA versus the string BA. That's kind of what's happening here because one is technically a lower Unicode value. So by default, the built-in sort method will not work. We have to pass it a comparison function to be actually to actually be able to sort the thing. Because this is weird, right? I called sort, and now we have negative eight, fifteen, three, seven. What's happening? It's the fact that we need to tell it how to sort this. Uh, and so for that, we need a uh, an S ascending sorting comparison function. So we have a and b, and the sort function returns negative one if the value if a should come before b. It returns one if A should come after B in the sort order, or if it returns zero if A and B are equal to each other. Um, the shorthand for this is just A minus B, uh, because the the difference between the two is either going to be negative, zero, or positive, and that works in the same way too. Um, and now, 
it's sorted as we expect it from least to greatest. This is ascending, right? Least to greatest. <laughs> um, and actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna reuse this. Um, let's make a little function. Sort ascending with an array, and it basically does this. Yes. And so we'll return the ascending sorted array. Um, like this. Great. Now we've wrapped it into a nice little function. Um, potentially, we could pass in the sort function. We could say copy sort. <laughs> copy and sort. That's basically what this function is doing. Copy and sort. And uh, we can pass in the comparison function. But we'll default to ascending. So ascending is the default comparison function, so we actually don't have to pass in anything here. Um, but then later on for descending, we'll just uh, pass in a, a descending sorted one. Okay, so we have sorted the array. Great. Now, if the input array is equal to the ascending sorted array, uh, return yes uh, ascending. Immutable sort. Yeah, it's, it actually is immutable because it makes it makes a copy. <laughs> I like that. Um, or no, is it? Uh, I'm gonna call it copy and sort. Because because the, that's the thing, uh, the sort function in JavaScript actually mutates the array, and we don't we don't want that in this scenario. Because we what we want to be able to do is we want to compare them. So I'll say like uh, is array equal to the ascending sorted array. We we know this that this won't work because these are two separate arrays, but it's kind of what we want to do. Uh, and then we're just going to return uh, yes ascending like that. Um, this this is going to break. I know it's going to break, but I'm just going to write the code this way. Um, and, and then we'll come back to it. Um, OK, so now we'll make a copy and sort it descending. So to sort it descending, we would do um, a very similar comparison function, but we just want b minus a. And, and that's going to give us the values from greatest to least. Um, and then we want to say kind of the same thing here. So if array is equal to the uh, descending sorted array, we say yes. Descending. Did I spell that right? Cool. And then if, if it was neither of those, then we just return the string no. Like that. All right. We have this really ugly, ugly, ugly algorithm. It's technically broke right now uh, because uh, we learned earlier that this won't work. If we try to compare two arrays with the double equals, that's not going to work. Uh, what we need to do is what's known as a deep comparison. So. What I showed you earlier is if we have two separate arrays, we cannot use this equality thing to compare them. To compare them, we literally need to iterate and compare each value. And if every value is the same, then technically they hold similar values or the same values. Um, so there is that. And let's let's just write a little comparison function. So we'll say um, uh, is. Uh, are arrays equal? And you pass in array one, and you pass in array two, and this is going to return true or false. So uh, here's what we'll do. Um, say, uh, are arrays equal array and the sorted array like that? And then we'll do the same thing here, but we want the descending sorted array. Um, cool. So how are we going to do this? There are multiple ways. You, you can see, uh, like even Jalitter is saying we can use JSON stringify. So, so, uh, what I didn't show you, uh, is, is this. So let's say have, let's say we have, um, uh, wat equals okay. And we have who equals okay. Uh, I'm going to turn off Quokka so you can't cheat. Stop it. And is what equal to who? Is what triple equal to who? Yes or no? 
Let me know in the chat. What is this going to log? Is this going to log true? Is this going to log false? Is this going to log true? Is this going to log false? And why? White Legends, Legend, Legend says true, true. But why? Yes, it's true. Well, I don't know. We got to run the code. I assume it's going to be true. <laughs> um, but why? Why do they log true? Yeah, it, it's it's basically a, a value comparison, and and the way we talk about this is it's a it's a primitive type. It's not, it's not a reference type. So, uh, an array is a reference type, um, because it's stored in memory somewhere. But th this technically is an immutable primitive value, and you can compare primitive values using double equals and triple equals. Um, so, even though these are actually potentially stored in two separate memory locations. Like we have the variable wat that has okay, and we have the variable who that has okay. Even those are those are technically two places in memory, and it's two separate okay values. Um, because they're primitives, we can do this kind of comparison. And so it should log true in both scenarios because it we can compare primitive values. Now, that was potentially a little white lie, like the JavaScript interpreter might do a first pass optimization and see, oh, you're assigning this exact same string to two different variables. So I'm actually just going to assign them. I'm just uh, like the, the interpreter might do something like this. Like you create the first one and then the next one just points to that one because it's technically the, the same uh, immutable reference. But that's like a, an optimization. It probably happens. I don't know. People that know things would say that. But because they're primitive, uh, we can compare them directly. So if I start Quokka back up, uh, we're going to see short string optimization. We're going to see that we should get true. So uh, and, and that's because it's comparing their internal value, even though they're, they're separate variables and potentially stored in separate memory locations. I would go, even go as far as don't create the variable at all because it's not referenced anywhere else. Yeah, so it, it's referenced in these console logs, but if we remove these console logs, the JavaScript, uh, I mean, I want to call it the JavaScript compiler. Kyle Simpson says it's a compiler. I don't know. But the thing that's interpreting and running our code would potentially see, hey, there, nobody's even referencing these variables, so I'm just going to optimize them out of the way. <sighs> yeah, okay. <laughs> let's, let's keep going. So, uh, the reason I talked about this is because we're going to use this, and that's what JSON stringify gives us. So, by, by basically creating a string uh, in, uh, version of the arrays, now we can compare them using string comparison. Um, so, a, an easy way to do this would just be to say uh, return array one dot join is equal to array two dot join, and what this does is it converts array one into a string. And it converts array two into a string, and then it compares them. Um, and this this should this should work. Um, so we can see this says yes, uh, ascending. Uh, let me write this on the next line. And there are there are multiple ways to stringify it. I'll say that. Um, cool. Uh, so you can see the, the function is working. So in this case, it, it returns yes ascending. In this case, it returns yes descending. And in this case, it returns no. Now, uh, you, may not, you may not know this, but when you call array.join uh, without an argument, it automatically joins uh, with commas by default. So this, this will work. Uh, and I'll show you really quick how this works. So if I have like an array a is equal to uh, one, two, and three, um, if I say a dot join, that gives me a new function where all of the values inside of that array are, are separated by commas. Now, if I passed in the empty string, that's going to give me that. I don't want that because of the scenario where I have the array with 12 and three and an array with one and 23, and those technically are different arrays. So I would want that to, this to be joined together on a, on a, on a comma like that. So basically what I've done is I've created a string representation of the array here, a string representation here, and then I'm, I can easily use the, the equals to, uh, to get them. That's spicy, spicy. <laughs> or yeah, I mean, technically the, yeah, you're right. The array to string method, um, I believe uses join under the hood. Yeah. So even that, um, <laughs> we, we can get really weird with it. We can say array one plus empty string is equal to array two plus empty string. 
And I think this will work. Yeah, look at me. I, I can JavaScript. And the reason that this works is because when I concatenate a string with an array, JavaScript is going to coerce that array into a string by calling the two string method. And now I, now I have two strings. Um, yeah, it's, it's ugly. Don't do this. <laughs> and then the, the, so actually I need, I need, I should keep uh, all of these different versions. Yeah. So, I mean, technically if, if we're doing shortest code mode, plus an empty string is going to be a whole lot shorter than uh, calling the join method. J JavaScript is blasphemy. <laughs> Uh, I'm not, I don't think I'm going to talk about closures today. Uh, but yeah, so that's one way to compare them. This is another way. Uh, the, the way that was mentioned in the chat is uh, json.stringify uh, with the array. And so json.stringify will work with objects, will work with arrays. It creates a, uh, a JSON representation. And JSON is, is basically a data format. If you've worked with APIs, you've seen JSON before. But JSON is a data format that looks extremely similar to how we create objects and arrays in, in JavaScript itself. So we're basically turning this from an actual array that we can use in JavaScript into a string that is a JSON string. Uh, and then we're just going to compare that to the same thing, to the array itself. Um, or to array2, like this. Is, JS is JSON faster than JSON? I'm not familiar with JSON. So that's one way to do it as well. Um, the, I would say the the better the best way to do it is to not stringify it. The best way is to look at each individual value. So um, we basically need uh, we need a variable that says equal is initially f uh, let's say it's true, and then we need to iterate over every value in uh, in the array. So we're going to have an iterator that starts at zero. We'll say while well, um, i is less than array one dot length i plus plus. And then we can compare each of the values in the array. So I'll say, uh, if array1 at i does not equal array2 at i, uh, return false. Uh, like that. Uh, and actually, if we, if we get through this whole thing without returning false, then we'll return true, like that. Um, so if the two values in the array are not equal to each other. It's immediately false. We immediately know that they are not this. They don't have the same values inside of them. Um, another thing we should do before this is we'll say like if the length, if array array one dot length is not equal to array dot array two dot length, we instantly know that hey, these two arrays are different. They have a different length. We could do something like that. Um, yeah. Would it be faster to check the value than the string value? I I I think so. I don't know. We'd have to. You'd have to run uh, like a benchmark test. But I like this better because stringifying requires us to iterate the whole thing to turn it into a string, right? We have to look at the entire array, convert that into a string, and now we have a value. And then we have to do a string comparison, and that potentially needs to iterate to compare. This is a single iteration that's going to look at one value at a time and the moment we find two values that aren't the same it returns false yeah and so this is the this is the the nice higher order function way of doing it um so you can use the for loop but you could also say uh array one we want to check if every value in array one um is equal to that same value in the other array so we'll say return value is equal to array two uh, at i um, and this should work as well. Uh, yes, ascending, yes, descending, no, no, great. And so um, every is a higher order method that accepts a function. This function is called on every element in the array. And if that function returns true for every element in the array, the entire every call will return true. Um, if not, every returns false. So th this actually does do the short circuiting just like we have in the for loop. So the moment we find a value that is not equal, every returns false, and then we'll return false from this function. Could you use a reduce? It's very possible. Does every stop running if false? Yes, it does. It does. And so it's it's um, that's why it's similar to this one. It's basically, it's not... It's not going to look at the every value in the array. The moment, like the moment it finds one that's not the same, it's done. It, it won't iterate anymore. Whereas, actually, with reduce, you can't do that. With re reduce, needs to look at every single value in the array. Um, it's possible that you can skip checking the rest of the values, but it's still going to iterate the whole thing with the, with a reduce. 
Um, okay. It's so greedy and cool. <laughs> Wouldn't every fail if for some reason you got a raise of different length and the first one includes undefined? Um, oh well, I have this. I, that's why I added this check. If the if the two if the two arrays uh, do don't have the same length, re return false. So we're gonna check that first, which makes this make more sense because now we know that they have the same length. Can I explain why converting array to string works? Uh, so I mentioned it earlier, but basically in JavaScript, you can compare strings with double equal or triple, triple, triple equal because they're, they're primitive types. That's why it works. So when you convert an array to a string, that's going to give you one string. You create an, convert another array to a string, that's going to give you another string. But when you compare two strings, the, we can use double equals or triple equals. Nested arrays... Um, it, 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 then you run into tricky, it gets even trickier. So right now we're dealing with arrays of numbers and that's easy. If you have an array um, with objects inside of it, like this, you gotta go deeper. <laughs> so you can't just uh, stringify the array because what, what's gonna happen, actually I, I, will, I will give, 10 gold stars to anybody that can tell me uh, what this is going to output uh, if when I join it together to turn it into a string. Uh, and let's put uh, Kohib in this array. 10 gold stars. All right, so we have this variable called wow. If I say wow.join, what am I going to get back? Object, object. Yeah, yeah. So by default, to string on an object doesn't know how to basically JSON stringify this. It doesn't do that by default. Um, it gives you literally back the string object object a mess yeah you're gonna get a mess so if i do a wow dot two string i get object 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 and that's literally the string object object um yeah so i wouldn't i wouldn't want to use two string in this scenario however if i used stringify uh we would get the nested values because um stringify goes infinitely deep until it runs into uh, it'll uh, json dot stringify will um Stack overflow, uh, ma maximum call stack size ex exceeded. So stringify is going to go, it's going to try to stringify everything, even if um, there's like uh, circular references, which results in a stack overflow. But regardless, in this case, they're two separate objects. So that actually gives us back the, the string, string version. Yeah. Yeah, no, people have trolled me before, like setting stuff as object object in the, in the overlay. Yeah. Uh, why do you need to use a compare function when you're using buffers? I think the same thing. Like a buffer is just an array of uh, binary data. Or not binary, array of data. Um, so um, the comparison function is likely looking, it's, it's basically an implementation of this, this loop or this every that looks at every value in the, in the buffer. Uh, it, it depends. I mean, I think it, it, I think it depends on um the javascript engine like when you stringify it potentially sorts the keys of the object or i, I yes this is something that you might have to think about and if that's the case then you need to do a, a different kind of comparison for objects like so what i'm doing right now is i'm just saying is that value equal to that other value but if we have objects then i need to do like a deep comparison here instead of saying triple equal i would say deep compare the two values i check to see are they objects if they are objects i need to look at every key and in, in i need to make sure that they have the same number of keys i need to look at the value of every key in both and do a similar thing it, it gets much more complex um which is why um like in lodash there's a function called uh, deep compare Something like that. Compare deep. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Deep. Uh, clone deep. Compare. Equal. Is equal. Performs a deep comparison between two values to determine if they are equivalent. Okay, uh, that's interesting. That <laughs> It's literally called is equal, but it actually does a deep compare. But uh, this is why a lot of people might use a library like Lodash because it does all the hard work behind the scenes of looking at the properties individually and it's not just doing a JSON stringify. It's, it's com more complex than that. Yeah. Um, yeah, circular JSON, right. Dynamic object keys. 
But uh, in this, uh, should a junior dev be expected to write deep equal from scratch at an interview? I would say a junior dev should be capable, but I think that's a bad interview question. <laughs> I mean, because um, you would n really never write uh, deep equal on the job, right? You would uh, use a library, likely. Um, however, writing a deep equals function uses a lot of... Uh, it, it basically shows that you know a lot about JavaScript because you'd have to use object.keys or you'd have to use like a for of or a for in loop. Um, you'd have to, bas yeah, basically use a lot of the language features to be able to do that. So it's, it's a good test of JavaScript knowledge. I don't know if it's a good uh, test to see if they're a good fit for your team and would be good at writing web apps. <laughs> okay. Um, all of this to say... <laughs> Our function works. All right, now I'm going to show you just, uh, we're going to throw all of this away. Um, and, uh, and and I'll say really quick, the reason that this is working right now is because we're only dealing with array of numbers. We are, we're not worried about objects, which is why this works. My company hires people, uh, hires mostly because of the person, not the code. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's not solve it this way. <laughs> let's... Um, Let's solve it in a single pass. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the beginning of the array. Let's write some pseudocode. So we're going to iterate. Um, we'll just say iterate over the array. And we'll start from left to right. Um, and we'll, we'll need some variable to say like the direction. And actually, we could set direction based on the first two values in the array. So we, we can look at the first two values in the array, like 1 and 2. And if we look at 1 and 2, we know that if this is a sorted array, then, the, then it must be ascending. So we're going to assume that it's ascending. And in this case, if we look at 15 and 7, we're, we know that it would be descending. In this case, if we look at 4 and 2, we know it would be descending. The moment we saw 30, we would know that it's not that. So I would, I would actually... Uh, let's do this. Let's... Um, uh, set direction to ascending or descending based on uh, first two values in the array. What if the first two elements are equal? Um, not going to worry about that. <laughs> it's, it's possible. It's very possible. But this is a very simple kata, and I don't think they'd do that to us. They might, though. We'll see. But I'm just going to look at the first two. Um, and uh, if they are ascending, we'll have a variable for ascending. And if they're descending, we'll have a variable set to descending. We're going to look at every value in the array uh, after the first two. And um, if the current value is uh, greater, if ascending continue um, if the current value is less if descending continue otherwise return false or return uh, no um, and then if we made it out of the loop and we didn't return then we're going to return uh, yes with uh, direction. Something like that. Um, why is what pronouns on the commands page? But Oh, because uh, they're, they're separate. So the commands page shows you things that are on in a cloud uh, cloud bot and pronoun is a command that's not cloud bot. It's part of the overlay. What if the array is huge? <laughs> um, this is a this is a, a seven Q kata, but as a thought experiment, if the array was huge, uh, there are other things that you can do that I don't know or care about right now. But yes, yes, if you care about if you care about um, runtime and complexity and all that good stuff, you can do optimizations and such. All right, um, let's just look at the t first two values in the array. Um, so we'll say we'll have direction, 
And um, that just defaults to nothing because we need to set it. And so it will say if array at zero is greater than array at one, then uh, the direction, actually, let's do this. If array at zero is less than array at one, then the direction is equal to uh, ascending because uh, it's going least to greatest. Um, else, if array at um, zero is greater than array at one, then the direction um, is descending. And actually, I think we, I mean, I think we can take care of that scenario where array zero, or the first two values are equal to each other. So if they're equal to each other, then let's just <laughs> ignore those first two values uh, and look at the next two values. So I could, I could do a recursive call and say copy and sort with array dot slice and forget about the first two. So forget about the first two, try again. Um, that should solve it. Um, now, we need to iterate, um, right, that, should that solve it? Zero, so do, do I need to slice one or do I need to slice two? How does slice work? Uh, start to end. Slice just the first one? I like that. Just remove the first one because the next, we could compare the next two, yeah. Why the first two? Shouldn't I compare the second and third element as well? Uh, no, I just want to know what direction are we trending? And if we break that trending at the third one, then we're done. We're instantly done. Um, okay. Great. Great. <laughs> I think this is fine. <laughs> you all you all are like, you should be QA testers or something. Like, you're finding all these holes in my logic. I'm telling you, this is a simple kata. This is simple. I don't, I, we don't have to get this, this intense with it. Um, okay, now I just need to loop. Um, uh, we're going to go from the second index because we already looked at the first, the, the, the zeroth and the first one. Um, so we're going to have our iterator start at two while I is less than um, array.length. I plus plus. We're going to do this logic. Um, and if we make it out of the for loop, we're going to say return yes with the current direction, whatever that direction may be. Great. But if not, we need to do this comparison. So, um, we need to look at, uh, the current value and the previous value, right? Yeah. So we'll say, uh, if... Um, array at i minus one, which is the previous value, is uh, less than or equal to array at i. Um, continue. Keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> um, and so basically, if it's if the direction is equal to um, ascending, and the previous and this one, the previous one is less than or equal to this one, then we're good to go. I mean, I'm going to use a continue statement. I actually don't like a con like continue statements um, because continue is a bit confusing. But basically, all this says is don't do the next thing; just keep going around in the loop. Um, And here I'll return. So uh, we're checking this here. We're checking this here. Um, and in this case, I just return no. But this needs to be if the direction is uh, descending, I need to reverse the logic like that. And this should work. Yes, this works. No, it doesn't work. Can I not have a return in a. Uh, so if the direction is ascending, and yeah, uh, I've talked about it before, but I don't like to talk about it publicly because of the creepers. Yes, we were afraid of the creepers. <laughs> I work at a software consultancy in Denver. Um, I guess I could do else if. Why is why, why is that not working? 
For array less than two length, you don't enter the for loop. That's fine. Um, isn't it? I don't know why this is so hard, but uh, we're going to do this. <laughs> else, uh, else, just return no. Hey, Alka. Oh, yeah, yeah, it is the wrong function name. What's, uh, why did I do that? Um, <laughs> it's supposed to be called is sorted and how. Um, Wrong function name. Yes, ascending. No, uh, yes, descending. No, this is fine. <laughs> this is totally fine. Here, I'm going to um, I'm going to plug this into Code Wars and see if there's any edge cases edge cases that it catches. Um, but let's see if it works. So it works for the basic test. Does it work for the full attempt too? Yeah. See. I don't have to worry about all these other edge cases and stuff like that. Um, we talked about it at the beginning of the stream. Uh, and if you are interested in Code Wars and you're a beginner programmer, at the beginning of the stream, I showed you how to sign up on this website and then how to search for katas. I'll, I'll show you that really quick. Um, so on Code Wars, the katas range in difficulty from 8Q all the way down to 1Q. So 8Q is very easy. Uh, fundamentals basically and one queue is very hard um, I've worked on one and two queues on this show and they've taken me multiple episodes to even solve and today we were just solving eight queues and seven queues um, and it's reversed the the higher the number the easier it is the lower the number the harder it is um, but the one that we were just solving was a seven queue so I knew that it was it's, it's an easier problem I know that they're not going to throw a bunch of edge cases at me and, and different stuff like that so uh, my my naive solution that doesn't account for all the different scenarios still works which is fine uh, because also I have I have to go I've been I've been live for a while I gotta go back to work um, and this works um, the Dan level challenges I'm not I'm not familiar with that term is that a karate term or a uh, martial arts term the q belt color in karate uh yeah i think it's like a belt color <laughs> the but the i don't belts don't have numbers associated with them right a martial arts term dan level oh it's a rank i see uh in the game you are ranked from 27 q through one then one dan through nine to oh are you really? It's above black belt. Huh. Okay. Um, I had no idea. I'm I'm currently a three Q on the site. So I don't know. But that was fun. Thank you everyone for hanging out and participating. We learned some things today, right? We learned about array comparison and we learned about uh, reference types versus primitive types. We learned about a primitive comparison. Um, uh, we learned how to actually uh, deeply compare an array of primitive values like this. What else did we learn? Um, we learned that you just do do your best you don't have to account for every possible scenario um because especially in some of these easier katas uh the harder katas you absolutely do so when it, when you get into like uh five four three q territory they've written tests that are testing to make sure that your your function accounts for all of the different scenarios um and all of that but yeah at what point do you become a lieutenant dan um I, I really like Forrest Gump. It's one of my favorite movies. Um, no, so I... Uh, I guess I've never really talked about that I shouldn't talk about where I'm from or where I was born. Mainly to, uh, again, avoid the creepers, like someone mentioned earlier. Uh, but they're asking where, where am I from originally. I live in Colorado right now. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you that. Uh, I learned a huge amount of new job titles, yeah. All right. I'm gonna go now. Thank you all for hanging out. Uh, we're gonna raid somebody, so let's get let's get ready to raid like this. One forest one. Uh, if you go to this website, this is your raid message. Uh, if you are 
a um a sub and if you're not a sub this is your raid message yeah you're welcome for the stream thanks for uh thanks for hanging out with me uh there will be no friday stream the next stream is actually not until monday monday um So, I'll see you then, I guess. I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. Um, but yeah, join us in this raid. Among Us stream win. I don't know, maybe we'll do a mods one. I'd have to buy the game. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, stick around for the raid. Uh, wherever we go, be nice to them. Drop a follow if you like what you see. All of that good stuff. Um, and I, again, I'll see you Monday, no Friday stream. Um, I'll try to remember to host some people that are streaming on Friday and this weekend. And also check out the live coders team if you haven't, cause uh, did I do it? I, yeah, I did it. <laughs> uh, click that link. There are a lot of other, uh, people that code live on Twitch and, uh, you might like them as well. $5. Alka said $5. Is that, is that how much the game cost? I should buy the game. <laughs> Alrighty, everyone, wherever you are in the world, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. And until next time, here's this.